26th. This will allow the listeners to download and read the book for free. And uh, you need to check that out today. It's an amazing, amazing book. Dennis Brown is back. A summer love story. Check out DennisJamesBrown.com and tell him you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Welcome to the world-famous Jiggy Jaguar radio program. Raw and uncut, Jiggy Jag, you know how you do it. You know what I'm saying? Keeping it all the way live. Broadcasting live from Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, I'm sitting here with a linguist. I had a linguist. no idea. <laughs> I love I didn't that. know you were a inter- but I didn't know that you were a wordsmith. <laughs> Call Jiggy right now. 267 267- 22 Jiggy. Daddy Hey Jiggy, what's happening, man? It must be that uh, <laughs> David Bowie song. Jiggy play guitar. Jeff. It's a great name, man. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Presenting. I'm, I'm Mike Massey, and uh, you know you can catch me on Jiggy Jag TV and uh, see a few of my tricks up there. Thank you very much. Jiggy Jaguar. I never knew what freedom was until I saw you lose yours. Oh boy, it is the world famous Jiggy Jaguar radio program. There we be. Ba ba bum. Welcome to the big broadcast. We are live as live can get Monday through Friday, 2 to 5 Central, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific. 24 7 at JiggyJaguar.com on the TuneIn apps and radio loyalty, and our podcast is available at iHeartRadio. Interesting day that we have in front of us here. If you want to get a hold of us on the Facebook, you can do so. Facebook.com slash the Jiggy Jaguar. And as you can see, yes, I've moved the camera. If you were watching us on Ustream, I have you moved the camera. It is now getting a sky view of us. Getting a sky view. It's bro- we're broadcasting from the... Uh, from, from, from the Jiggy Jag Sky Cab. But, uh. I've got paperwork here. Where the hell's my actual notes? There we be. Ba ba bum. Hey, I can use that. Look at that. I can actually use my little note. My little notepad thing. See, I always want to scoot forward. I always want to be, like, right up on this mic. Because I can hear myself. So if I do this, I can hear myself, but I can't hear myself as well. But I don't want to turn my headphones up. See, I just... Ugh. See, I wish I had like a... Um, you know, one of those one of those crane things. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Tony Orlando is going to be in Abilene, Kansas next month. Now, if... You're trying to, if you're sitting there going, who the hell's Tony Orlando, by the way? By the way, we're broadcasting today on the Starcom Radio Network as well. Also, we're going to be coming soon to something called the Beer Man Radio Network, whatever the hell that is. I I don't know. We're going to have to... uh, did you actually say to me, how about Led Zeppelin? Did that actually come out of your mouth? You got Led it. Led Zeppelin came out of your mouth. Right there. Here we go. Tony Orlando's going to sing Led Zeppelin. Tony I got a school. I got a school. Tony Orlando singing True Love. That's Tony Orlando, and Tony Orlando will be part of a huge event in Abilene, Kansas, the Eisenhower Museum. That is where Dwight D. Eisenhower, um, Ike was born and he is going to be part of a gigantic event we're going to be talking to um carl i believe is his name in the next segment about this he is a uh 
the hell's that interview? I taped it earlier this morning, and we're going to air it here in a few moments. Um, eight minutes after the hour. Thanks for joining us today. Da da dun, as they say. I don't know who's saying. Don't know why they're saying it, but they're saying it. And uh, it just goes right back in. There it is. Yesterday we had Mary Mann on this broadcast, getting a lot of good response from her. And uh, Facebook.com slash Jiggy Jaguar. The Jiggy Jaguar, if you want to go over and say hello. Well, we're going to be on something called the Beer Man Radio Network. I don't exactly know what the hell that is. But we're going to be in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, summer love. City of love, city of freedom, city of liberty. What is it? City of brotherly love, that's it. Joan Hamburg to host a weekend show on WABC New York. After a long career at Crosstown Heritage AM News Talker WOR in New York. Cumulus Media announced that New York radio personality Joan Hamburg is joining its News Talker 77 WABC to host a weekly Saturday morning program to air from 1 to 3. Cumulus says on the show, Hamburg will continue to discuss the most important social, economic, and political issues that impact listeners' lives each and every week. Hamburg will also interview major celebrities and powerful political figures on the program. In addition, the deal calls for Hamburg to produce weekly features and exclusive programs available in digital formats. Hamburg comments how excited I am to join the legendary WABC and work with Kim Bryan and Craig Schwab and the rest of the Cumulus family, and what a treat to join their roster of the best talk talent in the country. New York, get ready, the conversation is about to begin. So another, another old, old guard gets fired and gets another job. It's not shocking. Um, apparently Mike Francesa, you might know him as the guy from, uh, WFAN in New York, according to a story by Neil Beast, Neil Best, in Newsday, WFAN New York, set afternoon drive superstar, this is what Talker says, not me, Mike Francesa has been ordered by CBS Radio Management under the threat of lawsuit not to gripe publicly about the simulcast of his show being bumped from Cable's Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2 for live sporting events. (laughs) Best reports that while Francesa didn't talk specifically about the Fox Sports simulcast issues, he said on his radio show that in contrast to a corporate statement to the contrary, he has been threatened with legal action if he speaks publicly about anything that costs the company money, with the implication being the Fox Sports arrangement, in other words, he could be held liable for any income CBS loses if Fox Sports' relationship dissolves. So they're basically paying to simulcast his show. So he's a little angry. And, uh... Apparently some guy by the name of Bill McMahon is sounding off on key radio issues. Uh, a veteran consultant, which I always have a lot of, I always have a lot of uh, use for consultants. He had a significant influence on the modern era of talk radio as a thinker and innovator, Bill McMahon. I'm gonna move that. Him and his company, the Authentic Personality, developed what has come to be known as the Authentic Personality Method. The first formal training process for radio personalities and program directors. Hundreds of radio personalities and program directors in the U.S. and the U.K. have participated in this authentic personality workshops. McMahon was the first to recognize Rush Limbaugh's talent on loan from God and give him a platform for his use. In addition to Rush, he had influenced the careers of many of radio's biggest stars, including Kid Craddock and Johnny Vaughn in the U.K. Interestingly... McMahon was the featured interview in the very first print issue of Talkers almost 25 years ago. Let's see. Radio is no longer attracting the best and brightest talent, according to this guy. Well, you know why? Because radio wouldn't hire the best and brightest talent when they had the chance, and they all ran to the internet. I'm a case in point on that one. 
Radio needs to launch an immediate campaign to recruit extraordinary talent who love creating audio entertainment and have ideas for new programs and formats that consumers want and need. Okay, he's recommending that, but yet I just read you a story about Joan Hamburg, who is coming to WABC, who had a show for like 20 years on WOR. The radio industry's desire to create big mass appeal formats and programs goes against everything that's happening in the world. Things that are succeeding have clearly defined specialties. Think Rush Limbaugh, Howard Stern, and Fox News. In this world of unlimited choice where consumers are in control of what they consume and when they consume it, having a clearly defined and distinctive specialty is a must for success. According to this guy. The 14 traits inherent in the best radio personalities provide a guide for evaluating and recruiting the kind of talent radio needs to attract to continue to be viable. Basically what this guy says is radio's got to attract some talent. I'm not questioning that. Just saying you got to be able to know where to find it. Know when to hold them. I, don't know. I wanted to go into some reference to something. I don't know what the hell that was. We're going to take a time out. When we come back, we're going to chat with a representative from the Eisenhower Museum. Carl... Weisenbach. He's the director of the Eisenhower Presidential Library Museum and Boyhood Home. He'll talk about the October 11th event with Tony Orlando and a Bob Hope tribute. Back with more. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. I'll tell you, Personal Appointments with David Adelson is a fantastic marketing partner. It's it's a, it, If you can afford an appointment, buy a DVD. Check out davidadelson.com for more information. Let's spell it for you. D-A-V-I-D-A-D-E-L-S-O-N.com. The social media is available. Facebook.com slash Spiritual Divine Gifts. You can also find them on Twitter at Gifts from Devotion. And that's Gifts from D-V-O-T-N. LinkedIn as well. Search Gifts from Devotion. And Google Plus. Find them on Google Plus as well. Here's some testimonials. Amazing stuff. Great broadcast, David. Instructive, helpful, uplifting, healing. Thank you, JS from Massachusetts. He's helping people in Wisconsin as well. Thank you, David. It was helping and healing, says TC. David is an amazing, amazing individual. Thank you so much. David, your session was such a blessing to me. I'm feeling so much released from my financial woes. Thanks for the techniques and knowledge you have given me concerning money and to let go and focus on my desires. I feel so blessed. Divine Mother directed my to my website yesterday evening to receive this blessing, which truly touched me and lifted my desperation. Again, thank you. That's M.M. from Florida. Iowa checks in. North Carolina. Amazing stuff. Gifts from devotion.com. David Adelson is helping people worldwide, and you need to check it out. David Adelson.com. That's D A V I D A D E L S O N.com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, Keeley Kendall Designs. That's KKD. Creates and champions jewelry that makes you want to get up, get dressed, and go out. Hit the town or hang at the beach. KKD accessories are as in tune with your sophisticated side as they are with your favorite casual, cool, laid-back looks. Keeley Kendall Designs is all about having fun, being who you are, and feeling gorgeous, cool, funky, and modern. Express yourself in KKD. Check it out today. KeeleyKendall.com. That's K E E L E Y K E N D A L L dot com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. 
We all love a great deal, especially when we get quality items at a great price. I want to tell you about an eBay store that has some of the best deals I've ever seen, and you got to check it out. MyFloridaShop.com MyFloridaShop.com offers great deals on clothes for men and women, gift items, jewelry, and more. With brands like Chico's, Old Navy, Dockers, Lands, Inn, Izon, only to name a few. You'll save 10% on the quality items at MyFloridaShop.com and always free shipping. MyFloridaShop.com just added plus size clothing. New items are added every month. Right now there's a big sale going on at MyFloridaShop.com to make room for new inventory. Visit right now MyFloridaShop.com One of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. Check out RSO.LV slash make money! R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. Check it out today. Amazing, amazing website. Check it out today. It's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And we'll spell it for you. R-S-O dot L-V slash M-A-K-E-M-O-N-E-Y. That's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And tell them you heard about it here A Transmedia Worldwide. This is Chris Markowski, your watchdog on Wall Street, and this is your watchdog on Wall Street Money Minute. The Pope has come out, and he made some pretty bold statements this past week, um, basically saying that we are at the, well, the cusp, or if we're not even already, in World War III. He talks about all these little pockets of conflict that are taking place all over the globe, and I guess bring them all together, we are in a sort of a World War III. And who's at war against? Again, I, I'm not a politically correct guy. Never have been. Um, I guess, I guess maybe, maybe uh, you know, if I was working at one of the networks or had a big uh, program sponsor, I guess maybe they'd, they'd hold a gun to my head and make sure that I was. But I don't think I'd ever succumb to it anyway. The reality is, we know who we're fighting against. We just are afraid to say it. Everyone is so afraid of offending somebody and diversity and all this nonsense until it gets us killed. Watchdog and Wall Street dot com. 24 7, 365. The number two internet radio program according to TalkStreamLive.com. This is the Jiggy Jaguar Radio Show. Welcome back to the big broadcast, coast to coast and border to border. We are live as live can get on the Starcom Radio Network, which is 20 plus AM FM stations across the country and around the world. We are also on 50-plus stations through the Jiggy Jaguar Radio Network. And uh, coming soon, we're going to be airing in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on uh, Sunday afternoons. We'll have uh, more details on that as we go. And um, there's going to be a fantastic, fantastic event coming up at the Eisenhower Presidential Library Museum and Boyhood Home out there in Abilene, Kansas very soon. And uh, we wanted to get on uh, a few people as, as we talk the next couple weeks to, uh, to, to, to get this figured out, because this is a fantastic event. We've got um, Carl Weisenbach. I hope I got your last name yeah, right. Weisenbach. So, mm-hmm. Weisenbach with us today. He's the director of the Eisenhower Presidential Library Museum and Boyhood Home. Prior to joining the team at the Eisenhower Presidential Library in Abilene, Carl was the head of the Nixon Papers in D.C., and uh, he's with us today talking about this incredible event for October 11th. Um, Carl, welcome to the program. How are you, sir? Well, thank you very much. Glad to be here. Now, this is uh, this is going to be a great event. Um, first of all, let's talk about this event. Is, is this something that you guys do on a regular basis out there? I know that you guys... Uh-huh throw a lot of events because i know that you guys did a, a really cool um d-day event uh right. this this last this last summer um tell us a little bit about this october 11th event well it's it's it, it, it is in october and we look forward to it it's on uh, october the um 11th yes indeed at, at the at the presidential library campus uh it's, it's, it's from 2 to 5 p.m uh, the cost is is uh, ten dollars per person. Yes. Uh, but but for that ten dollars, you get to see a great concert. You'll be able to see uh, Tony o- Orlando in concert. Yeah. And then we also have a um, a tribute to um, World War Two era radio stars. And we have uh, Chuck Carson and one other person that will be 
during that aspect of, of the uh, uh, program. So we're looking forward to uh, having a, a great turnout like we usually do for uh, this kind of program here at the library. Well, this is this is going to be a fantastic event. The Presidential Library Museum and Boyhood Home is a, is uh, at uh, 200 Southeast 4th, um, Abilene, Kansas. And, of course, uh, this is the, – we're going to have – you guys are going to have Tony Orlando live in concert. And you're also right. going to have um, a tribute to Bob Hope and the radio stars of the 1940s, starring right. Lynn Roberts, featuring Chuck Carson as the NBC announcer. And, of course – Admission is adults ten dollars. Active duty military five, and children are free. Uh, mm-hmm. There's going to be hot dogs and lemonade available. That this this is truly truly going to be a really cool event. Now, um, why, this this event is 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 so cool because you've got uh, Tony Orlando coming, and uh, Tony is a member of the Eisenhower Foundation Board of he Directors. Is. Tell us about this. Yeah, he is a member of the um, the Eisenhower uh, Board of Directors. Of the foundation, and we are just you know tickle things that uh, he is in that position, and that um, he is um, uh, he will be traveling from I think Branson, yeah, uh, Missouri to to Abilene to um, to have this uh, concert. It, it, it's a it's a um, you know as you can imagine it's a fundraising uh, concert, and the money that um, we make from the concert and from the ticket sales goes right into providing. Uh, uh, public programs here at the uh, Presidential Library. So we're really thankful that um, uh, Tony is, is, is um, uh, holding this special concert uh, here in um, Abilene. And this was his su- suggestion, by the way. He actually volunteered to uh, do it. And um, wow, you know, we're already starting to get um, a lot of inqu- inquiries from uh, people beyond Abilene, Salina, and so forth. So yeah, you know, so we're looking forward to. Um, you know, having a, a, a great October Love uh, uh, program here at the uh, uh, library. Now, um, Bob Hope and uh, DDE were longtime friends. Um, uh, tell me a little mm-hmm. bit about this. The, the, this is really cool. Well, I, I think I think one thing you can see about about the um, uh, friendship is uh, in, in our museum there is a whole gallery that was uh, sponsored by by the, the the Hopes by the Hope family. And so I think that that um, gallery. You know, uh, demonstrates the, um, the 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 friendship between the the, um, the president and and, and the uh, and the whole family. This is this is going to be a, such a fantastic event. October eleventh is, is 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 when this when this event uh, is is going to be. Now, tell me a little bit about the uh, the five buildings that make up this twenty two acre yeah. campus. Yeah, one thing. Yeah, I'll be glad to the. Uh, um, I can just back up for a second. The, yes. the uh, Eisenhower Presidential Library Museum and Boyer at Home is, is part of the, um, is administered by the um, uh, National Archives in, in, in Washington, uh, D.C. Okay. And um, what what we have here at the library, as, as, I, as I mentioned in the uh, in the name of the of the uh, location, it, it is it has a not a birthplace. But but the but the family home of Eisenhower that, that was turned over to the um, uh, federal government by the uh, Eisenhower Foundation uh, many many years ago, and then there's also the um, um, uh, the burial site for for the, for, the, for the president, Mrs. Eisenhower, and their firstborn son, which is in the in the uh, the chapel, and then we have the uh, visitor center building where we um, show a film about the Eisenhower era. Uh, we also have uh, uh, other programs, Kansas Town Hall programs, for example, book talks, uh, you name it, we have it in, in that uh, uh, building adjacent the uh, the gift shop where people buy their tickets and so forth. Yeah. And then we have the um, uh, museum building, which houses um, uh, a, a wide variety um of, of uh, artifacts. In fact, we have about 78,000 artifacts here at the uh, Presidential Library that, uh, that is stored over in the uh, museum building. Not all of not all those ob- objects are, are, be, are being being shown at any at, at one time, but we uh, constantly uh, change out the the uh, the artifacts to keep it fresh and so forth, and create uh, new new uh, um, programs in the uh, museum. And then we have the uh, library building, 
which is on t- uh, two floors. It has a, 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 um, a gallery on the uh, second floor and on the first floor. But that's where you also find the holdings of the archives. We have about um, 27 million pages, if you can believe that, that, that documents the, the wow. uh, Eisenhower era. Wow. So, <laughs> and and we, are, um, we are now, uh, we, we've now set an all-time record for research researchers here at the uh, presidential library and i mention that because usually a a, um, a, 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 a newly open presidential library uh, has, usually has the highest number of um, researchers but we're doing this 50 years after the president you know left office which is absolutely um, uh, incredible so we're really pleased that uh, uh, that we are having so many here at the um, at the uh, library. Plus, uh, this week we will probably have about uh, uh, three or four thousand, or actually five thousand students, as, uh, in, in response to the Constitution Day um, activities this week. So we got we got people coming. I mean, sc- sc- kids coming from all of uh, northwestern Kansas. Some some schools in southwestern Kansas. Yeah. And then t- today we got the Abilene kids. So this is what we do. You know, we, we, we put on quality exhibits. Um, we are a, a, a research institution. Um, it, we just do a, a wide variety of programs that, that makes the um, um, library uh, very popular, not just with, um, you know, local um, folks, but also people from other parts of, of, of the state and abroad. Um, on, on average, we usually have visitors from about 30 countries uh, and last year looking at the stats um, we had visitors from every state in the union thanks to uh, to i-70 which goes through um, through abilene and we know you know all about the interstate you know highway system that was created by the, the president by president eisenhower so our job our job is basically to to, uh, to document the the uh, military career of Eisenhower and also the uh, the presidential years, so it, it's an it's an exciting um, time to be here at the um, presidential library. Our attendance has gone from about forty thousand to to two hundred thousand in the last four or five years, and I, I give credit to Eisenhower because of his uh, increasing popularity. Yes, indeed. Um, yes. Pardon. Yo, oh, he he is he is more popular as uh, as time goes on. Why do you think that is? I I think it's one of the things is, is that you have a lot of people that are still interested, very much interested in in World War II, but you're also starting to see a lot of uh, I can use the term baby boomers. Yeah. Uh, you know who who lived through the 1950s. I was at or they, they grew up in in the uh, 1950s. Many of them are re- retired and and they, you know. Uh, find their way to um, uh, Abilene, and I think we're also doing a, a, a pretty, pretty good j- job in in um, uh, promoting the the presidential library, the, the holdings, the archival holdings. You know, uh, in the in the past, I think we spent quite a bit of time, you know, promoting Eisenhower um, in Abilene, but now we promote uh, Eisenhower and his legacy. Um, regionally, nationally, and internationally, and I think that's um, uh, that's helped you know considerably. And of course, you know we're looking at um, uh, new programming. We've added things like the Kansas Town Hall program, so we look at issues that impact um, uh, life here in uh, Kansas and the Midwest. Uh, we we have partnerships with um, with uh, Kansas State University, with uh, Kansas Western University. Um, and we believe that those partnerships also play a, a big role in in bringing um, people out to to um, Abilene, Kansas. And that's what we wanted. That, and that's you know we are a, pres- a federal presidential library, and we, we believe that that's what we have to do is, is um, ed- educate the public about you know Eisenhower's um, military career yep. and Pennsylvania yep. career. And that's and that's a unique position to have. You know we. You know, we, we have sometimes people from the World War II era that think we should make the, the library, that we should focus more on the military career, whereas you've got um, pe- uh, people who grew up in the 1950s and so forth who think we need to do more, we need to emphasize more 
the the the, uh, the presidency, and that's a good good uh, argument to have, and we, we try to do both. Well, I know that you guys do a real good job of covering pretty much everything uh, that there is with with Eisenhower. Um, you guys, you guys do a, a fantastic job out there. Um, I think so. Tell me a little bit about. Uh, I know we're talking about the Tony Orlando event, but um, you guys did a a really cool D Day event this past summer. Tell me a little bit about uh, yeah. some of the some of the different things you did with that event. Yeah, um, I I think it might might be safe to say that uh, we had the uh, the biggest D Day program in, in the uh, in the U S. this past summer. We had over twenty five thousand people attend the, uh, the uh, D-Day Plus 70 program here at the uh, um, library. We had um, uh, reenactors. We had uh, World War II uh, veterans. We had uh, symposiums. Um, we, had, we, we have right now special exhibits going on that pertains to uh, uh, D-Day and aftermath. Um, and then, of course, you might have heard about the, uh, the, uh, the, the concert on the plains. Um, it's sort of become a tradition here at the uh, library, um, and we have a, a partnership with the um, Salina Symphony to do an annual concert here at, here on, on the campus, and it usually starts about 8:30. And it's just wonderful to see a, 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 a uh, some thousands of people, you know, turning out for for a, um, a well prepared you know concert that uh, we received a lot of kudos, you know, for putting that uh, concert on, and obviously, um, we, we want to, we have, we, we have to, uh, and want to thank the, the donors who made that possible. I mean, it cost a lot of money to put together a uh, concert, and, and why do I mention that? Um, is that the federal government does not pay for any of our programs. The, the federal government, you know, pays for infrastructure, for, you know, when the lights go out, for example, or to cut the grass. Um, and, and things like that. They'll pay for that. But if we want to do a a program, if we want to bring in a a uh, a, a speaker uh, and, and uh, uh, so forth, um, we we have to we have to uh, uh, go through our foundation or or special donors to cover the cost. So that's that can be wow. kind of you know challenging at times. Wow. Now, but, uh, but again, that's because yes of the, of the way we're set up. You know, it is a federal institution. But the federal government does not pay. They'll pay for our salaries, but it, but they they do not pay for the, pay, the federal government does not pay for any of the um, uh, ninety one programs that you have here uh, you know, on campus. Now uh, let's let's wrap it up here with yeah. with our great guest. Um, October eleventh is going to October be 11th. the mm-hmm. the event. The cost is uh, ten dollars for adults, five dollars for active military, and. Uh, the kids are free. You need to bring your lawn chairs. General admission uh, available. Gates open at noon, and um, it's going to be Bob Hope and DDE. Uh, th- this this th- this is this is a heck of a deal. Bob Hope tribute to the the radio stars of the '40s, and uh, Tony Orlando, who's a member of the Eisenhower Foundation Board of Directors. He's going to be performing a concert there, and uh, EisenhowerFoundation.net if you want to get more information. Or you can give them a call at 785-263-6797. Uh, sir, I appreciate you being on with us today because, Carl, that this you are a uh, fantastic resource. I hope that uh, when I come out there to cover this event, we can maybe do a video interview or something with you. Or that have you great. take us on a tour or something because you know a heck of a lot about Ike. That is so cool to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, 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 it's great to... Um to um, um, have the opportunity to study the, the Eisenhower legacy, and we're we're, and I'm also glad that you know we have a wonderful staff that that is um, um, uh, high, has high professional standards and very much interested in in the uh, legacy, and of course we're also pleased that we have a wonderful foundation to help provide support for our programs. Well, sir, have yourself a wonderful day, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, man. You too. Thank you appreciate very, it. very much. I appreciate it. Definitely. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Now, uh, Tony Orlando is going to be live at the Eisenhower Museum, and uh, we're hoping to get some coverage of, uh, of that event. We're going to be doing it for our, uh, for our website, kjagradio.com. We're going to take a time out here. When we come back, we've got more, so stay tuned here on the World Famous.
Jiggy Jaguar, you show back here in a few moments. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. I'll tell you, personal appointments with David Adelson is a fantastic marketing partner. It's it's a, it, If you can afford an appointment, buy a DVD. Check out davidadelson.com for more information. Let's spell it for you. D-A-V-I-D-A-D-E-L-S-O-N.com. The social media is available. Facebook.com slash Spiritual Divine Gifts. You can also find them on Twitter at Gifts from Devotion. And that's Gifts from D-V-O-T-N. LinkedIn as well. Search Gifts from Devotion. And Google Plus. Find them on Google Plus as well. Here's some testimonials. Amazing stuff. Great broadcast, David. Instructive, helpful, uplifting, healing. Thank you, JS from Massachusetts. He's helping people in Wisconsin as well. Thank you, David. It was helping and healing, says TC. David is an amazing, amazing individual. Thank you so much. David, your session was such a blessing to me. I'm feeling so much released from my financial woes. Thanks for the techniques and knowledge you have given me concerning money and to let go and focus on my desires. I feel so blessed. Divine Mother directed my to my website. Yesterday evening to receive this blessing which truly touched me and lifted my desperation. Again, thank you. That's M.M. from Florida. Iowa checks in. North Carolina. Amazing stuff. Giftsfromdevotion.com. David Adelson is helping people worldwide, and you need to check it out. DavidAdelson.com. That's D-A-V-I-D-A-D-E-L-S-O-N.com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, Keeley Kendall Designs. That's KKD. Creates and champions jewelry that makes you want to get up, get dressed, and go out. Hit the town or hang at the beach. KKD accessories are as in tune with your sophisticated side as they are with your favorite casual, cool, laid-back looks. Keely Kendall Designs is all about having fun, being who you are, and feeling gorgeous. Cool, funky, and modern. Express yourself in KKD. Check it out today. KeelyKendall.com. That's K-E-E-L-E-Y-K-E-N-D-A-L-L.com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. We all love a great deal, especially when we get quality items at a great price. I want to tell you about an eBay store that has some of the best deals I've ever seen, and you got to check it out. MyFloridaShop.com MyFloridaShop.com offers great deals on clothes for men and women, gift items, jewelry, and more. With brands like Chico's, Old Navy, Dockers, Lands Inn, Izon, only to name a few. You'll save 10% on the quality items at MyFloridaShop.com and always free shipping. MyFloridaShop.com just added plus size clothing. New items are added every month. Right now there's a big sale going on at MyFloridaShop.com to make room for new inventory. Visit right now MyFloridaShop.com One of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. Check out RSO.LV slash make money! R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. Check it out today. Amazing, amazing website. Check it out today. It's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And we'll spell it for you. R-S-O dot L-V slash M-A-K-E-M-O-N-E-Y. That's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And tell them you heard about it here a Transmedia Worldwide. Welcome to the Unlock Your Wealth Update. Here's Heather Wagonhalls. Fashion typically remains behind closet doors, but if you're remodeling a master closet, then listen in. We've got some money-saving tips to keep your closet styling and extra cash in your pocket. Clean up and clean out. Clean your closet by cleaning out clutter and unnecessary clothes. Sort them into three bins labeled Keep, Donate, and Seasonal. While going through each item, ask yourself, am I really going to wear this again? If you hesitate, then donate. Add a splash of paint. After you clean out your closet, spice things up in there. Add texture to the walls or get creative and paint a quote that will put a smile on your face every day. Reuse items in the house. Take that cracked mirror and add bling around the edges to cover up the crack. 
Make it unique and usable again. Hang the mirror in your closet to reflect your jewelry, giving it the shine it deserves. For more great resources to help you create unlimited wealth and happiness, visit our website at crackingyourmoneycode.com. I'm Heather Wagonhals. Now go out and unlock your wealth today. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. I'll tell you, Personal Appointments with David Adelson is a fantastic marketing partner. It's, it's a, it, if you can afford an appointment, buy a DVD. Check out davidadelson.com for more information. Let's spell it for you. D-A-V-I-D-A-D-E-L-S-O-N.com. The social media is available. Facebook.com slash Spiritual Divine Gifts. You can also find them on Twitter at Gifts from Devotion. And that's Gifts from D-V-O-T-N. LinkedIn as well. Search Gifts from Devotion. And Google Plus. Find them on Google Plus as well. Here's some testimonials. Amazing stuff. Great broadcast, David. Instructive, helpful, uplifting, healing. Thank you, JS from Massachusetts. He's helping people in Wisconsin as well. Thank you, David. It was helping and healing, says TC. David is an amazing, amazing individual. Thank you so much. David, your session was such a blessing to me. I'm feeling so much released from my financial woes. Thanks for the techniques and knowledge you have given me concerning money and to let go and focus on my desires. I feel so blessed. Divine Mother directed my to my website yesterday evening to receive this blessing, which truly touched me and lifted my desperation. Again, thank you. That's M.M. from Florida. Iowa checks in. North Carolina. Amazing stuff. Giftsfromdevotion.com. David Adelson is helping people worldwide, and you need to check it out. DavidAdelson.com. That's D-A-V-I-D-A-D-E-L-S-O-N.com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. The Jiggy Jaguar Radio Program every afternoon on the network, coast to coast and border to border. Keep up with Jiggy online at JiggyJaguar.com. Welcome back to the big broadcast. It is the afternoon edition of the world famous Jiggy Jaguar You Show. 45 minutes after the hour, we're going to be chatting with Dr. Jack Caravelli here in just a few moments. In our next hour... We're going to be chatting with Joshua Klein. He, uh, he along with his uh, co-author, have uh, written a great book. It is about uh, the real Benghazi story, and uh, Joshua Klein will be with us in the next segment to talk about that. Dr. Jack Garabelli is on the telephone with us. Doctor, how are you, sir? James, great to be back with you. All, all is well. Now, there is a, a lot of different things going on. First of all, um, there is... What is going on over there? I I just have have, have seen this um, just the last couple of days. Uh, what is this deal in Scotland? Because I've missed Scotland, this. Yes. I don't know what the yeah, hell's I, going on here. Catch me up, doctor. Well, make it brief, James. It's, but it's complicated. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, tomorrow, I, I would. I was actually in London last week, as you know, and I, I caught two news falls. So he, here's the story. Uh, tomorrow, uh, those eligible in Scotland, including uh, the youngins as, as early, I think, as 16 or 17, are eligible to vote. Uh, you know, it's a very simple question. Uh, do they or do they not favor uh, becoming independent, uh, fully independent as a new nation uh, from, uh, from England and breaking with the United Kingdom, an entirely separate country? The, the implications of that are huge. Uh, the polling has been uh, all over the landscape. For months it looked like the, the people who wanted to maintain uh, the union, maintain uh, unity, uh, would easily win. But in, in the past month, you know, the polls have almost flipped upside down. And depending on who you believe, uh, there is a, a, a fair chance that uh, tomorrow the voters of Scotland will, will vote to break away from the United Kingdom. Um, uh, that has security implications. The U.K. bases its nuclear submarines in Scotland. It has enormous implications for the use of the British pound. The British government is saying if you leave, you don't get to use the pound. 
uh, the financial institutions that, you know, that support the U.K. have been pulling uh, billions of dollars out of Scotland. Uh, the Queen has been petitioned by David Cameron, the Prime Minister, to weigh in and support the continuation of the union, and she said, basically, <laughs> leave me alone, I'm neutral. Uh, so, I mean, this, this is really uh, worth watching uh, because the, the outcome is still very much in the air. It's Dr. Jack Carabelli he joins us today here on the big program talking uh, the issues of the day. This, uh, what, what, what is going on here with President Obama committing troops and money and everything to fighting Ebola? Uh, fighting Ebola, yeah, I mean, I know this is something that you had cared about a lot, and we, we talked about previously. Uh, I guess he feels that, uh, in, in, look, it's, it, it, it's a serious problem. Uh, you know, I'm pleased that we're responding. Uh, I'm not sure that you need any kind of, you know, military assistance, maybe except those with, you know, sp- specific um, uh, medical training, you know, to really weigh in on this. Um, you know, the, it, it is a terribly contagious uh, airborne uh, type of disease, uh, deadly at least in 50% of the cases and much higher death rate if you don't get health care. You know, I think the real... Uh, the, the real key to me, James, isn't so much government assistance, although that's fine, I don't begrudge it, but, you know, having institutions like maybe the Gates Foundation, the Clinton Global Initiative, you know, provide, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 some, maybe some medicine, uh, some, you know, volunteer uh, nurses, doctors, uh, facilities uh, in uh, part of West Africa, you know, that has really been hit hard and, just try to contain it, but this is probably the worst Ebola outbreak you know we've ever seen. Uh, and again, I mean, to your great credit, we were we were talking about this a month ago, and uh, you were way ahead of the president as you usually are <laughs> on, on a lot of these issues. We've got Dr. Jack Caravelli with us today. He joins us live talking about the uh, some of the different issues going on in the world. Uh, earlier today. This was uh, this was announced, but uh, apparently, uh, th- this whole deal with ISIS just continues, or ISIL, or whoever the heck it is today. This just right. seems to be going uh, full bore with uh, bombings and all sorts of things. Why is it that? And I understand a lot of this has to do with the fact that uh, the 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 military industrial complex is the, the buzzword that they like to say. But uh, I saw a, a couple numbers earlier today that apparently we have spent between four and six trillion uh, the last twelve years fighting uh, last twelve years fighting wars all over the damn place. Uh, what what the heck is going on? Do do we? You know, we've been at war for basically twelve years. Uh, experts have put the total cost at four to six trillion dollars. Imagine if we'd invested that in our own country and our own people. There, doctor. Uh, James, yeah, I mean, you, you've, hit the, you've hit the heart of the matter. I mean, there's, there's clearly a, a lot of our uh, fellow citizens that, that, that share the same concerns about, you know, the cost of the war, not only in dollars, but the human lives and, the, you know, many of the grievous wounds that so many of our, you know, soldiers uh, have, have suffered because of these wars. I think some of the wars were justified. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The, the Taliban, uh, you know, in Afghanistan was okay. Uh, I think the Iraq War in 2003 was a terrible mistake that has, uh, in some respects, led to the problems we have today. But on top of that, the, the Obama administration, James, and, and I think the, you know, despite, you know, I think the president's fervent desire to get away from all wars has, has found you can't do that. But, you know, the problem... You know, with Obama, as we've discussed previously, uh, simply is, is he really has, for himself or, and his advisors, there's really no apparent, you know, grand strategy that sort of provides you a North Star or a roadmap, you know, to guide, you know, decisions that are pretty faithful, beginning with whether you, you go to war or not. And the way we do it <clears throat> really strikes me as, as almost bizarre. If you, if you feel something is worth fighting for, you go in, you hit it as hard and as fast as you can, and, you know, on this kind of uh, tiptoeing around ISIS, ISIL, whatever you want to call it, 
it, to me, is nonsense. We easily have the military capability, uh, with or without you know NATO or Arab support, uh, to, to pound these guys. And you know, in in wars gone by, including you know in 1991, the Persian Gulf War, when we easily defeated um, uh, Saddam Hussein and kicked him out of Kuwait. Uh, you know, we we are able to do these things and you know this president you know is just he, he wants to see he wants out of both ways look like he's being reasonably responsive but he does not want to put both feet in the pond and until you do you know you're, you're not into it and the, the result is a protracted and as you just said very costly kind of engagement it's almost like a twilight war it is Dr. Jack Caravelli. He joins us today here on the big program, Coast to Coast to Border to Border, 53 minutes after the hour. And um, Dr. Jack, you've been uh, you've been overseas. What, what what are some of the some of the folks overseas saying about some of the issues that uh, we're facing here in America and worldwide? Well, you know, it's really great to get that perspective because they, you know, it, it, it's simplistic, but they really do see the world and some ways uh, different than us, but certainly when I was in London, I think there was also a clear sense that, you know, the British officials I met with, and I also met with a couple of uh, uh, Italian uh, diplomats, that, that they share a view that, you know, the troubles in Ukraine and also, of course, as we were discussing in the Middle East, really merit, you know, a, a, a cohesive alliance uh, response, you know, that includes you know, some, some pretty firm military actions. There's, you know, n no one in Europe or, and very few here in the United States, you know, w want another shooting war. But, you know, the, the, you know, we don't always choose, you know, what, what we get to do. Some of these things are thrust upon us, both in Europe and here. And in this case, you know, the, the beheadings of Americans and a Brit uh, is just an example of, of a bloodthirsty bunch of, of, of thugs that can easily be uh, destroyed, but we, we've got to summon collectively the will to do it. And, and I think the one encouraging thing, uh, you know, from my trip, uh, aside from the fact that my flights on United Airlines miraculously worked on time, uh, <laughs> is, you know, is, is, is simply that, you know, I, I think there is a, a growing perception in Europe that, uh, you know, no one wants war, but we've got to be prepared. You know, 100 years after World War I broke out, you know, we need to be prepared to defend ourselves. You know, this group clearly would do us as much harm as it could. And under those circumstances, which we didn't choose, uh, you know, we've got to respond appropriately uh, to defend our own interests. And, you know, it's, to me, it's a black and white issue. And more and more, I think those... You know, in London and and on the continent are you know beginning to see it that way as well. We've got a fantastic, fantastic regular contributor with us today. Fifty six minutes after the hour, Dr. Jack Caravelli joins us each and every week to talk about some of the different issues going on in uh, the media and around the world. Uh, the general elections coming up. I, I got to see a lot of this firsthand when I was out covering the Kansas State Fair. I noticed that yeah. uh, that there. That there was a, a governor's debate and a Senate debate, and during those debates, there was a lot of you, you could see that uh, the left side and the right side of the aisle was clearly defined. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, if if that's that way on the local level, it's got to be just astronomical on the uh, on on the other level on the on the national level. Um, how do we how do we bridge that gap and kind of bring everybody back together? Uh, is that possible? Well, James, you have asked an extraordinarily important question because it goes to the the heart of our political system right now, which is, you know, you and I have chatted previously. It, it is it is really as you're implying, almost entirely dysfunctional. Uh, I think there is some support on the Republican side for the president to take actions in the Middle East. But by and large, I mean, if you look at what the U.S. Congress has uh, has accomplished in the past, you know, legislative year, you know, the short answer is, you know, honestly, very little. Uh, it's the fault of both sides. And I think to the heart of your question, um, you know, I've been in Washington for more than 40 years. 
And what I think I see today more than ever in, in the past that I've been here is simply it is harder to find statesmen. It is harder to find people willing to war, work across the aisles uh, and not engage in just partisan bickering, you know, sort of because they think they should or because they can. You know, we, we've got to find a, a, a set of leaders willing to compromise and that's viewed as a dirty word in Washington these days, uh, because there is merit often on issues as expressed on both sides of the aisle, as you say. Uh, but until we're willing to listen to the other side uh, and try to find some common ground to move forward on issues like immigration, foreign policy, the economy, you know, we are going to be a nation that is falling further and further behind. And frankly, you know, we're not getting the job done as a country. Many things are unresolved. Uh, a lot of it goes to the gridlock in Washington, and you know maybe miraculously in the midterm elections in November we'll, we'll get a, a, a new crop of leaders. Um, but you know we need to find a better way to get this done because we are we are not doing well as a government as a nation. Uh, I think the American public senses that, and in fact I I was talking to a a United States senator about a month ago, um, and I, I won't name him, uh, he was a Democrat, but he looked at me and he said, they should fire us all. And he was referring to the Congress and, and the American public. And it's what he said to me, quote, unquote, he said, they should fire us all. Uh, and that's really a telling me more coming from a, a, you know, a, a member of, of the United States Senate. So we... Um, you know, you really touched on something that is extraordinarily important. Uh, but until the American public demands, and I mean that, demands more from its leaders, you know, we're going to keep getting what we're getting. And it's, you know, it, it is, again, falling well short of what we need and, and what we deserve as a nation. We've got Dr. Jack Caravelli with us today. Doctor, before we let you go, um, what do you think is going to be the big story coming up this week? Well, you know, as, as we started, James, uh, you know, tomorrow we'll have the vote in Scotland, and that, that'll be worth looking at, and you, you and I can talk about that soon thereafter if you want, because uh, it has a lot of implications. We, you know, we are a smaller, more interdependent world than ever. The, the British remain, uh, you know, uh, our steadfast allies, and, you know, if, if this vote goes in a direction of independence for Scotland, it's going to have really uh, unforeseen consequences. Uh, for the Brits, again, our, our important allies, uh, and, and that is something we need to watch very, very carefully. So, you know, let's put on our seatbelts and we'll watch this uh, Kabuki theater play out, and uh, we'll, we'll know more in uh, 24 hours or so. Dr. Jack Caravelli with us today. Doctor, thank you, sir, and uh, we'll, we might try to uh, catch up with you tomorrow at a certain point uh, once this vote takes place and maybe get you on in the afternoon at some point. That, that would be fine, James, and happy to chat about it. I, as I said, the, the papers in London the past week were just filled with it, and you know they're, they're, they're talking about it in ways, of course, that we, we have in here, so there's some real insights to be gleaned from, uh, from those conversations. Well, that'll work. Well, Doctor, we'll talk soon. Thanks, sir. James, take care. Have a good day. Appreciate it. Dr. Jack Caravelli coming back with more. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, Keeley Kendall Designs. That's KKD. Creates and champions jewelry that makes you want to get up, get dressed, and go out. Hit the town or hang at the beach. KKD accessories are as in tune with your sophisticated side as they are with your favorite casual, cool, laid-back looks. Keeley Kendall Designs is all about having fun, being who you are, and feeling gorgeous. Cool, funky, and modern. Express yourself in KKD. Check it out today. 
KeelyKendall.com. That's K-E-E-L-E-Y, K-E-N-D-A-L-L.com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. We all love a great deal, especially when we get quality items at a great price. I want to tell you about an eBay store that has some of the best deals I've ever seen, and you got to check it out. MyFloridaShop.com MyFloridaShop.com offers great deals on clothes for men and women, gift items, jewelry, and more. With brands like Chico's, Old Navy, Dockers, Lands, Inn, Izon, only to name a few. You'll save 10% on the quality items at MyFloridaShop.com and always free shipping. MyFloridaShop.com just added plus size clothing. New items are added every month. Right now there's a big sale going on at MyFloridaShop.com to make room for new inventory. Visit right now MyFloridaShop.com One of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. Check out RSO.LV slash make money! R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. Check it out today. Amazing, amazing website. Check it out today. It's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And we'll spell it for you. R-S-O dot L-V slash M-A-K-E-M-O-N-E-Y. That's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Welcome to the Racing to Success Minute with Nadine Lajoie. Taking good habits. It's not easy to do, but that is what makes people successful. What I recommend you to do is for the next year, every quarter, you are just taking one habit that you don't like or can be improved, and you are working on that habit for 21 days. If you are procrastinating, maybe your habit should be to every morning to make a list of five things you need to do right away and you just do it within the next hour. That will stop the procrastination habit that you have inside yourself. Any habit can be changed and hopefully you can change four habits within the next four quarters. This is Nadine at NadineRacing.com. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. I'll tell you, Personal Appointments with David Adelson is a fantastic marketing partner. It's, it's a, it, if you can afford an appointment, buy a DVD. Check out davidadelson.com for more information. Let's spell it for you. D-A-V-I-D-A-D-E-L-S-O-N.com. The social media is available. Facebook.com slash Spiritual Divine Gifts. You can also find them on Twitter at Gifts from Devotion. And that's Gifts from D-V-O-T-N. LinkedIn as well. Search Gifts from Devotion. And Google Plus. Find them on Google Plus as well. Here's some testimonials. Amazing stuff. Great broadcast, David. Instructive, helpful, uplifting, healing. Thank you, JS from Massachusetts. He's helping people in Wisconsin as well. Thank you, David. It was helping and healing, says TZ. David is an amazing, amazing individual. Thank you so much. David, your session was such a blessing to me. I'm feeling so much released from my financial woes. Thanks for the techniques and knowledge you have given me concerning money and to let go and focus on my desires. I feel so blessed. Divine Mother directed my to my website. Yesterday evening to receive this blessing which truly touched me and lifted my desperation. Again, thank you. That's M.M. from Florida. Iowa checks in. North Carolina. Amazing stuff. Giftsfromdevotion.com. David Adelson is helping people worldwide, and you need to check it out. DavidAdelson.com. That's D A V I D A D E L S O N.com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Welcome to the world famous Jiggy Jaguar radio program. Broadcasting live from Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, I'm sitting here with a linguist. I had a linguist. no idea. <laughs> I, love I didn't that. know you were, but I didn't know that you were a wordsmith. <laughs> Call Jiggy right now at 206 227 22 Jiggy. 
Daddy money. Hey, Jiggy, what's happening, man? It must be that uh, <laughs> David Bowie song. Jiggy play guitar. Je it's a great name, man. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Presenting. I'm, I'm Mike Massey, and, uh, you know, you can catch me on Jiggy Jag TV and uh, see a few of my trick shots there. Thanks very much. Jiggy Jaguar. I never knew what freedom was until I saw you lose yours. Welcome to hour number two of the world famous Jiggy Jaguar radio program. We're live as live can get from the KJAG radio studios in Hutchinson, Kansas, 2 to 5 Central, 3 to 6 Eastern, 12 to 3 Pacific, and 24 7 at JiggyJaguar.com on the TuneIn apps and radio loyalty. Our podcast is available on iHeartRadio. The Jiggy Jaguar radio program is brought to you by our good friends. That's right. Are you interested in starting a home based business? Well, now if you, we're going to show you how to generate $2,500 every week from home by simply advertising a phone number. That's right. Without ever having to sell, convince, or explain anything to anyone. Plus, receive professional team leaders to call and close all your prospects for you. Would it be worth three minutes of your time? Our system is 100% guaranteed to earn you income or we'll pay you $1,000 in cash. Call 760-263-6008 right now for a $2,500 per week system. That's 760-263-6008. We're going to go to the telephones. We uh, are going to be talking to Mary Margrel here in just a few moments. She has uh, got made a fantastic, fantastic connection with the folks over at ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Mary, welcome to the program. How are you, my friend? Thank you. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Now, this is uh, really, really cool. You have made an exciting new connection over there with uh, ABC's Dancing with the Stars. You're also a jewelry designer. Um, tell me a little bit about this connection. You've got an upcoming accessory feature uh, that the, uh, essentially the dancers and necklaces and earrings, which are being uh, scooped up uh, backstage and worn on air by the Dancing with the Stars contestants. Judges, guest stars, everybody, tell me about this. Um, well, the jewelry is spiritually inspired, and the idea is you wear it to remind yourself of what you're committed to. Um, we have some pieces. The cute little gal from Duck Dynasty was wearing I Am Blessed, which she selected, and we were thrilled to have her featured in that. Uh, I think it She's uh, very much a blessed gal, and she did great on the show. We also had, um, there was an Olympian, uh, Lolo, and she was wearing a diamond necklace that um, we like to say it's a diamond that dances because it sparkles and it does actually move. Wow. Um, and then the side of it says love and light, and that was supposed to be about the inspiration of, you know, diamonds are light, but then you have to have heart, so... It's been exciting and fun. We I just got back from L.A. where they did the first two nights. We've got uh, Mary Margo with us today here on the program. She joins us live talking about uh, this this unique connection that she has with uh, ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Uh, she's a jeweler and designer, and she joins us live. Now, um, the the judges, the guest stars, the contestants, everybody I was talking about there, they, they've worn these. Um you, it's basically, they, they've graced the backstage lounge, uh, beautiful, yet sublimely, spiritually... Sublimely steeped in spirituality. Yes! <laughs> tell, tell, tell us about these designs here, my friend. Tell me about these. Um, well, there, we own uh, the trademark on I Am Blessed. We also have pieces that say I Am Healed, and we put a pink sapphire in for breast cancer awareness. And we also do... Um, a piece that says, uh, I am fearless, and they're been, we've been in business for um, almost 14 years now, and, and we've been blessed and lucky to have people respond beautifully to the pieces. So it's, uh, the idea is it's a talisman that reminds you of what you're committed to in your life. So when you wake up in the morning and you are driving and you have a ring that says, I am blessed, it, you know, while you're in traffic and you know, kind of worrying about road rage or whatever. You look down on your steering wheel and you see, I am blessed. It just has you stop and think for a minute because when we compare ourselves to a lot of other people who are less fortunate in the world, we need to sometimes remember that 
the fact that we're even driving a car is a blessing, right? Very much so. How, how did you get interested in, uh, in jewelry design and things of that nature? I have, well, I'm a sculptor. I have a master's degree in fine art, and I was working in New York City, and I was making very large uh, steel sculptures that were like seven feet tall, and it's not easy to sell seven-foot steel welded sculptures in New York City. There isn't a lot of room for them, so I started making jewelry because they were like little sculpture, and after a while I realized I wanted to do something that made a difference in the world. So instead of the uh, necklaces that have, this, you know, just company names on them, I thought it would be important to have words that actually made a difference in somebody's life, at least in my opinion, <laughs> my humble opinion. <laughs> now, uh, this th th this is so cool. You you you've managed. Is is this? Uh, I know that you've worked with many many stars in the past. Jennifer Anderson, uh, me more, Halle Berry, all these people. Um, they're just, they're, they're amazed by your designs. They love your jewelry. Um, why is this? Well, I think that um, they're normal human beings like the rest of us. Um, we all could use a little bit of grounding, but I think in Hollywood they tend to like to have something a little bit more to get grounded with, and I think... What happens is, is why we hear about them is they're making movies and they're in the press anyway. So it just sort of became a uh, a big trend uh, in all of fashion, actually. You know, you see words on jewelry all the time nowadays, which is a good thing. But it all started about uh, 14 years ago when I had my first piece and it was in People magazine and and it just exploded from there. What was that like for you being in uh, being in People magazine after uh, spending several several years, uh, you as know, a designing artist. jewelry? <laughs> yeah, as, as a starving artist. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. It was really good. I started. Uh, I actually started working from home. So um, I, 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 I've been selling for over the years now. It's been thousands of different kinds of pieces that um, they've been on the Today Show. They've been on Good Morning America. Um, we 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 appreciate it, and it's really great because we, every piece is actually moves through our own hands, and 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 the fact that they say love or grace or wisdom, it makes a difference for us even because it reminds us to have humility and and be grateful as well. We've got uh, Mary Markle with us today. She's a designer, and uh, she's she's done a lot of things. Uh, in the fashion world, uh, designing jewelry and, and doing things is... Uh, how, how, do you, how do you start your day as a jewelry designer? I've always wondered, uh, you know, like we, we've talked to authors and, and people all the time on this broadcast, and they talk about how they, they you know, when they feel like it, they, they, they start writing for the day or they have structured times. Is there structured times that you design jewelry or anything of that yeah, nature? Well, when I wake up in the morning, I'm usually pretty much raring to go but i need like just like the jewelry i was uh, making need to feel grounded and and connected to what it is i'm doing so i wake up in the morning i have a cup of coffee or a green tea and then i do some yoga i'll do some journaling i'll listen to some really great music that's very um calming and i get centered and and, you know, some, pe some people, you know, they'll list off what they're grateful for in the morning or before they go to bed at night. I pretty much channel all of that into my work during the day. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, there's sort of like a ritual. I need to make myself focused in the morning, and, and then the rest of the day is filled with producing the inspiration that I woke up with. Now, uh, how do how do we get a hold of you online? Where's the where's the best spot? There's, I have a website. It's marymargrill dot com, and then it's so it's spelled M A R Y M A R G R I L L dot com, and I'm also available on Amazon now. Amazon dot com. That's pretty so cool. You so you can just buy the jewelry right off of Amazon. Yep, you can order it off of Amazon as well. 
Well, Mary, I appreciate you making time for us today. Thanks for coming on. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. I am glad to be available, and thank you for um, inviting me. Definitely. Well, have yourself a wonderful day. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Mary. You too. Appreciate Take it. Take care. Bye-bye. Mary Markrell with us today here on the program. If uh, you want to get a hold of us on the Facebook, you can do so. Facebook.com slash the Jiggy Jaguar. We're taking a time out. When we come back, Joshua Klein will be with us talking about his great book that he wrote with Aaron Klein about the real Benghazi. Back with more. Let's tell you about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, DennisJamesBrown.com. Check out the website. That's D-E-N-N-I-S-J-A-M-E-S-B-R-O-W-N-E.com. Dennis Brown's a college professor who's just posted a romantic Kindle ebook titled A Summer Love Story, which you can find at the website, DennisJamesBrown.com. Or you can go to Amazon and search for it there. As you can see, this is just an amazing book. Everyone who has read this book has given it a five-star rating, which is very, very rare. I guarantee you, and the author guarantees you, if you like romantic novels, you will love A Summer Love Story. The Kindle Free Book Program is set up for next Wednesday, the 24th, Thursday the 25th, and Friday the 26th. This will allow the listeners to download and read the book for free. And uh, you need to check that out today. It's an amazing, amazing book. Dennis Brown is back. A summer love story. Check out DennisJamesBrown.com and tell him you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, Keeley Kendall Designs. That's KKD. Creates and champions jewelry that makes you want to get up, get dressed, and go out. Hit the town or hang at the beach. KKD accessories are as in tune with your sophisticated side as they are with your favorite casual, cool, laid-back looks. Keeley Kendall Designs is all about having fun, being who you are, and feeling gorgeous, cool, funky, and modern. Express yourself in KKD. Check it out today. KeeleyKendall.com. That's K-E-E-L-E-Y K-E-N-D-A-L-L dot com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. We all love a great deal, especially when we get quality items at a great price. I want to tell you about an eBay store that has some of the best deals I've ever seen, and you got to check it out. MyFloridaShop.com. MyFloridaShop.com offers great deals on clothes for men and women, gift items, jewelry, and more. With brands like Chico's, Old Navy, Dockers, Lands Inn, Izon, only to name a few. You'll save 10% on the quality items at MyFloridaShop.com and always free shipping. MyFloridaShop.com just added plus size clothing. New items are added every month. Right now there's a big sale going on at MyFloridaShop.com to make room for new inventory. Visit right now MyFloridaShop.com One of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. Check out RSO.LV slash make money! R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. Check it out today. Amazing, amazing website. Check it out today. It's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And we'll spell it for you. R-S-O dot L-V slash M-A-K-E-M-O-N-E-Y. That's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And tell them you heard about it here a Transmedia Worldwide. But uh, this segment is sponsored by our good friends. Uh, we have a thought about firing our bosses. Well, you can do just that, and I'm going to tell you how. I recently came across a brand new business that is helping people do just that, a business that is super easy to operate. It can virtually be set to autopilot. How good that would be. Just think of the income. You could you could fire your boss. Wow. Just think of that. Now you could be in charge and not have to listen to the boss ordering you around. I recommend you look at the video that's going to explain everything. Register for free on www.clickhere.kiwi. That's clickhere.kiwi. 
to secure your spot. Remember, it will cost you nothing to do that. You owe it to yourself and your family to just have a look. If you decide it is for you, a great guy from New Zealand will contact you. I hope you all know where New Zealand is. It's in that pure green country way down in the South Pacific where they made the, you know, the Lord of the Rings. This guy will help you with three easy steps to get you set up and start making a great income in just three to five hours a week. I guess you've heard of making money while you sleep. Well, this is it. Take a look at the website. There is lots of information. It could be the beginning of something amazing for you. I'll give you that website again. It's www.clickhere.kiwi. Grab a pen, write it down, www.clickhere.kiwi. I would love to know your story, and who knows, maybe when you have made enough weekly income to fire your boss, I'll invite you into the studio here, and you can tell me all about it. The website, again, is www.clickhere.kiwi. We'll spell it for you. C-L-I-C-K-H-E-R-E dot K-I-W-I. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Welcome to the Racing to Success Minute with Nadine Lajoie. Do you know how you can increase your productivity and your employees' productivity? You need to systemize everything. One of my forte is really to build a system. Even when I was 28 years old in my financial business, my plan of action was I do things one time. The second time, there is a trend, so I establish a process So like that, the third time I can delegate to my employees. And more you do that, you need to take a lot of notes. And what I do is I keep an Excel spreadsheet with all the tasks, with all the delay, all the software, all the links. So like that, everything is already ready to delegate. And visit NadineRacing.com. 24-7. 365, the number two internet radio program according to TalkStreamLive.com. This is the Jiggy Jaguar Radio Show. Welcome back to the big broadcast, coast to coast and border to border, all over the Starcom Radio Network, which is 20 plus AM FM stations across the country and around the world. Also, our good friends over there at uh, AM FM. 247.com and uh, Joshua Klein is with us today. He's an ex-fighter in the Israeli military, served as a senior researcher for the Real Benghazi Story. He's currently executive producer for the number one rated local weekend program Aaron Klein Investigative Radio and editor-in-chief of KleinOnline.com. He doubles as a news video editor for the popular World Net Daily website as well. Um, Josh is with us today. Josh, how are you, sir? You've got an a, uh, incredible project here we're going to be talking about. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's definitely uh, <laughs> some monumental uh, work and some information that I think uh, people will be blown away by. Now, um, this 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 forthcoming book on the Benghazi attacks demonstrates the official government narrative regarding the fate of murdered Ambassador Chris Stevens has some serious unreported discrepancies and leaves out key elements, uh, just uh, chronologically of, of of the events. Tell me a little bit about this book. Um, so the book is really, I mean, it started from day one after the attack. Uh, you know, the, uh, everything seemed so fishy. There was cover up upon cover-up, so we started really looking into it then, um, and then the scandal just kept on going for, you know, about a year or so, yeah. so we w- continued documenting and investigating it for so long that eventually we compiled so much information, and everything that's in the book, um, let me just mention, it's not speculation, it's not, you know, opinion, we'd like to just stick to the facts, so it's really, we went through thousands of pages of government documents, reports that came out on what happened in Benghazi, um, hundreds upon hundreds of hours of House hearings and Senate hearings, um, just to divine the information that's in this book. Um, and it's just tremendous amounts of little facts that uh, the media really never picked up on that are, I think, so much bigger than the scandals that the media did report on. The book, the book is fantastic. It's uh, well-written. It's well-researched. Uh, the book is called The Real Benghazi Story. And uh, Aaron Klein wrote this incredible book. We've got uh, Joshua Klein with us today. He, of course, uh, helped research and helped uh, helped in the, the process of putting this book together. Now, um, 
what, what do you think people are going to get out of this book? What do you want readers to take away from the book? Um, I mean, I want first of all people to understand that it's not just for those who are interested in, just, you know, some more information on the Megazi scandal. Um, that definitely is part of the book, uh, of course. You know, everything that happened uh, leading up to the attack, the attack itself, and then really mostly important after the attack and the effects that we're feeling from that attack to this day and can still be going on for many, many years to come, so it's very important to understand what happened in the past to really put what's going on now into the right perspective, and when I say now, I mean what's going on in Syria right now, what's going on in Iraq right now, we're talking about bombing ISIS, how did ISIS come about, who are they, uh, who are these Syrian rebels that you are hearing about on TV, uh, so really it's important to understand the, this information that happened in Libya, because that's exactly the template that we're trying to use right now with what we're talking about doing in Syria and Iraq, uh, mainly using U.S. air power and arming, quote-unquote, rebels, better known as terrorists, uh, to be our boots on the ground. That seems to be the new uh, the way that the U.S. is going to be fighting wars in this day and age. We've got a great guest with us today here on the line. Uh, Joshua Klein joins us talking about the real Benghazi story. Besides the Stevens material, the extensively sourced book breaks news on significant issues related to the Benghazi attack. Tell me about these. Um, yeah, there's just so much uh, different aspects to it. Um, first, I mean, I think the most important part of the scandal is for people to understand what was attacked that night. Uh, there were two different facilities, of course, the CIA annex, and the other one that most people think is either an embassy or a consulate, and that's really actually what started this whole entire getting into the research and looking into this event, was after two days after the attack, you know, I just I actually just went onto Google, looked at the State Department website, and I was just to see, if, you know, where is this embassy, where is this consulate in Benghazi, that supposedly this protest happened at that was incited by a video. Uh, there was nothing listed there. Um, I looked on, tried to find in every other place that I could, and then we actually called up the State Department and asked them if there is uh, some sort of U.S. embassy or consulate located in Benghazi, and they said no. So what was located there? It was something called a special mission compound, um, and what is that? Uh, it's, so it's, it's special in so many ways. We bring out in the book that the, who was providing the security for this. I mean, if this were an embassy, there would have been a marine contingent there. Uh, instead, it was actually a terrorist group called the February 17th Martyrs Brigade that was providing security for this compound where our U.S. ambassador was located at. And this terrorist group, the February 17th, uh, Mortars Brigade is actually a part of an umbrella group, which is under a group called Ansar al-Sharia, which is the group itself that took responsibility for the attack on this mission compound where Christopher Stevens died. So it's just really important to understand that and the, the, the sorts of uh, security that were going on, or rather lack of security that was going on there. They were obviously trying to keep this location very low-key. There was no U.S. flag outside. In fact, they simply once even asked uh, the State Department for just some guard, uh, one guard tower, and the reason they got the cable sent back saying no, and the reason was the guard tower we feel will bring too much attention to this facility. So what was going on in this facility that was so secretive and that they didn't want to draw any attention towards it? I mean, if I thought it was an embassy, that you know, that's where people go to get their passports renewed. So. Just understanding that really kind of blows away every other aspect of the story. Uh, you know, the video would make no sense, and even if that were to be true, that there was a video that incited a protest, how would they have not known to have gone to this secretive location? It was actually so secretive that on the night of the attack itself, uh, higher-ups in the military, I'm talking about higher-ups going to the head of AFRICOM, like Carter Ham. Yeah. didn't even know of the location, didn't even know of the existence of this special mission compound until actually during the attack itself. 
so it's just unbelievable pieces of information like this that I don't think is really were ever presented by, I, I guess, more of the mainstream media that will really put uh, in perspective what happened that night. We've got Joshua Klein with us today. He was part of the research team that uh, put together the real Benghazi story by Aaron Klein. This is a fantastic read. Uh, KleinOnline.com is the place to uh, pick it up. You can also get it off Amazon, and all major book retailers will have it as well. Um, tell me a, a little bit about um, what what you guys, what was the biggest bombshell, I guess, that you guys found uh, when you went through the research process that, that led to putting this book into full steam? Um, I think the biggest bombshell, I mean, that, and that we're still feeling the effects of it today, is exactly as I described before. That's why I was really getting into detail. What was this building that was attacked, and why was it so secretive, and why was Christopher Stevens, the U.S. ambassador, in this secretive location on September 11th, the most dangerous day of the year? So I think the, the most important fact to take away is uncovered that there was a gun running operation going on actually a twofold operation one was to a buy back weapons that we originally gave to these rebels to help overthrow Gaddafi uh, during the, the campaign to oust him the US and NATO were bombing and actually that's before Ambassador Stevens was Ambassador Stevens he actually arrived in a cargo ship two years before he was killed um, in the middle of the night, set up this mission actually then, before he was ambassador, and the purpose of it was to um, be a go-between to, between the militias on the ground to arm them and help overthrow Gaddafi. So, A, they were trying to get back, and also on top of that, there was actually Gaddafi had the largest stockpile of man pads, which are... Uh, man portable uh, uh, anti-missile systems that take down aircraft. He had about 20,000 of those uh, located in warehouses that were completely looted and every every single one of those were stolen, uh, which is a huge danger right now. Um, so the State Department actually had an official buyback program. It's all documented to $40 million trying to get back these weapons, and usually it's not too easy to get weapons back from terrorists, they're not so willing to give them up, um, so that could have something to do with the attack on the mission compound itself. And then second, we document that then they were taking these weapons and moving them on then to Syria and around that same exact time is when this Syria insurgency had started, and that's where it all came from, is that was the next... Uh, we were going to use the same template that we used in in Libya, now in Syria, to, at that time at least, try and overthrow Assad. So, and these weapons ultimately ended up in the hands of terrorists in the, in the Syria, Al-Qaeda terrorists. And a lot of those Al-Qaeda terrorists then broke off to form what is now ISIS, which is the group now that we're talking about bombing. So in a way, um, we essentially created and armed them uh, years ago as a result of our gun running efforts, unfortunately. We've got a fantastic guest with us today talking about the real Benghazi story. Uh, Aaron Klein and uh, Joshua Klein is our guest. Joshua helped research this book and uh, put a lot of, lot of good things into the, uh, into the hands of Aaron to get this book put together. Um, Hillary Clinton had a personal role in the Benghazi scandal. Can you fill us in a little bit on this? And uh, give us a preview of uh, what, what what her role is in in the great book, the real Benghazi story. Um, yeah, I mean she's all over it. I mean, first of all, obviously the fact that Christopher Stevens worked for the State Department was a U.S. ambassador and was killed, uh, obviously directly connects her to what, anything that was going on. And just to put it in perspective, it's not that common that uh, ambassadors are killed. This was he was the seventh one, unfortunately, in the history of the United States of an ambassador being killed. So these are pretty unprecedented events. Um, so she, as I mentioned before, that's why I always go back to what was the building that he was in. Uh, so actually for an ambassador to be in certain facilities, uh, mainly an embassy or a consulate, it requires a certain level of minimum security in order for him to be able to occupy such a location. 
Um, and if not, then it would need something called a waiver from the Secretary of State allowing him to go to these facilities. So we document in the book that they, she provided waivers in order for this to, building to exist that he was able to go to to run these gun running operations. And then we also document that she was actually, she was the main architect of this entire concept to besides buy back the weapons, move them onto Syria. So oh, she's all over this in so many different ways, it's unbelievable. And thirdly, this is uh, testified by uh, the number two, uh, Gregory Hicks, the number two at the embassy in Tripoli. He actually testified besides that, one of the reasons that he was in um, Benghazi that night was because Hillary Clinton wanted him to go there um, and they needed some paperwork done actually and she wanted that uh, special mission compound eventually turned into an, an imperial embassy um, and it was they were coming up again a dead hard line about uh, I think September 30th in order to get the funding so he testified specifically that uh, Chris Stevens was sent to Benghazi for one of the reasons also had to do with just Hillary Clinton's motivation to turn that building eventually into um, an embassy. So there's just so many different uh, ways that she's connected to this, and I don't see how she's going to escape uh, from it. I mean, unfortunately, she has up till now, uh, but uh, there is a House Select Committee that's actually starting up today, um, and hopefully they'll start getting some answers to some of these questions, and people will be held responsible for what occurred there. Joshua Klein with us today. He helped Aaron Klein research this great book, The Real Benghazi Story. It's a New York Times bestseller. It's going to be. It's an amazing, amazing book. And uh, KleinOnline.com is the place to be. Uh, the book trailer is up as well. And uh, Joshua, thanks for being with us today, my friend. It was a uh, great conversation, and I would love to do it again sometime. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely. Have yourself a wonderful day, Josh. Thanks, man. You too. Appreciate it. Joshua Klein with us today. We're going to take a quick time out here. On the big broadcast, coast to coast and border to border, the real Benghazi story is available. Amazon.com. Pick it up through our link at JiggyJaguar.com. And we get a little bit of a credit for that. We're also going to have a link to it. Uh, if you missed the interview or came in late or want to hear it again, we're going to post it as a uh, archive on our website. You can buy the book from there as well. Let's talk about one of our great market. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, Keeley Kendall Designs. That's KKD. Creates and champions jewelry that makes you want to get up, get dressed, and go out. Hit the town or hang at the beach. KKD accessories are as in tune with your sophisticated side as they are with your favorite casual, cool, laid-back looks. Keeley Kendall Designs is all about having fun, being who you are, and feeling gorgeous. Cool, funky, and modern. Express yourself in KKT. Check it out today. KeeleyKendall.com. That's K E E L E Y K E N D A L L.com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. We all love a great deal, especially when we get quality items at a great price. I want to tell you about an eBay store that has some of the best deals I've ever seen, and you got to check it out. MyFloridaShop.com MyFloridaShop.com offers great deals on clothes for men and women, gift items, jewelry, and more. With brands like Chico's, Old Navy, Dockers, Land's Inn, Izon, only to name a few. You'll save 10% on the quality items at MyFloridaShop.com and always free shipping. MyFloridaShop.com just added plus size clothing. New items are added every month. Right now there's a big sale going on at MyFloridaShop.com to make room for new inventory. Visit right now MyFloridaShop.com One of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. Check out RSO.LV slash make money! R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. Check it out today. Amazing, amazing website. Check it out today. It's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And we'll spell it for you. R-S-O dot L-V slash M-A-K-E-M-O-N-E-Y. That's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Out loud minutes. 
loud minute. The Inspector General reports that NASA is failing in its congressionally ordered mission to find 90% of dangerous asteroids flying close to Earth. This is Malcolm Out Loud. Just 10% of asteroids have been discovered thus far. With a deadline of 2020, the space agency is certain to miss the intended target. Well, the report criticizes the agency's near-Earth object program as understaffed and badly managed. The Out Loud truth is, you might recall another object that hit Earth about 66 million years ago, causing mass extinction. You might also recall the small asteroid that exploded in southern Russia last year, but with the force of 30 atomic bombs, injured more than 1,000 people. Well, the risk factor is a real one. Properly funded space exploration so that NASA can get the job done is no risk. And you can get the rest of the Out Loud Truth back at MalcolmOutloud.tv. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from back or neck pain, Bonatti.com. Welcome back to the big broadcast, coast to coast and bowda da bowda from the KJAG Radio Studios in Hutchinson, Kansas. We're live as live can get at the speed of live, as Shepard Smith used to say on Fox News. Back when I watched Fox News, back when I had cable, back when I bothered to spend money on cable. I don't do that anymore. I don't spend money on useless things. I steal it off the internet like everyone else. <laughs> That's what we do here, kids. Now, let's see here. We have a new setup. We have kind of a new setup. I have a three monitor setup now. <laughs> I remember back in the day when I had a barely a monitor setup. Now we have a three monitor setup. Now what that means is I have one monitor which is primarily TV based. That of course is I pick my nose. That's that that's good. Uh, over here on this monitor we have UStream. We have the Manicam. Uh, that's what's going on there. We have Skype. We have some other things. Then we have our monitor in the middle. Monitor in the middle! That is where we have our quintessential player. Our um, cool edit, Adobe Audition podcast producer, our encoder for the live show. We have liners and 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 production. Uh, then we have my my other monitor, which is where I do all the website stuff and all that stuff. It's over there. So I have a brand new setup. Hopefully, this kind of streamlines a little bit of things. It kind of makes uh, makes things a little bit more important to us. I don't know. Um. I purchased today. God knows why I did this. We now have three new streaming platforms that are coming to the to the family. Uh Basically, what's happened is, uh, I've been we 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 are getting ready to. Um, I guess I guess we're 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 getting ready to move into the. Uh, to a little bit more of a streamlined process. We we we're we've got Jiggy Jag twenty four seven, which of course is is. Uh, what you're, if you're listening to us on TuneIn, that's what you're listening to right now. It plays our show 24 hours a day. We have KJagRadio.com, which is our uh, the original. It plays anything and everything as long as it's unsigned. That's what happens there. We have our Rock Hub, which is going to get a brand new name at some point. 
We have an EDM hub. We have um, Hip Hop Hub. They're all getting new names. <laughs> Believe me, they're all getting new names. They're probably going to have a KJAG, and it'll be KJAG Hip Hop, KJAG EDM, KJAG Rock. Then we're going to have... Uh, then we have WKRP.FM, which I've talked to you about what WKRP is on this show many times in the past. We have two new stations that well, we actually. <laughs> I'm buying a computer over the ugh, buying a computer over the weekend, which will be KJG EDM. That will get us up and running there. Then. We're going to have a, we're going to have two new stations. We're going to have KJAG Comedy, which is going to be just a comedy stream. It's just comedy bits. That's all it is. Then we're going to have KJAG, um, oh, I should call it KJAG Comedy Zone <laughs> as a stab at Thomas Lamb. <laughs> Then we have KJAG Country. We're going to have a country stream, country music stream. Unsigned country music. I don't exactly know what the third one will be, because we bought... We're going to buy a computer over the weekend, and we bought three new... We, we, we bought three new computers this morning off of eBay... Someone had three computers and two monitors available on eBay, and I'm like, I gotta buy these. <laughs> so, for whatever reason, I bought them. <laughs> for whatever reason, we bought them. And, uh,. I guess that's what's going on. So that is <laughs> that is kind of what we're looking at here. I just ah, uh, I don't know why I bought three new computers when we don't even have two of them are not even programmed. Because the KJG EDM computer we're buying this weekend, KJG Rock. That is uh, well, that's already established. KJG Country, KJG EDM, but we have a we have a spot open. <laughs> we have a spot open. Why do we have a spot open? I don't know. So that's kind of what's going on there. We're going to be doing a Wichita remote this Sunday. Uh, hence why I'm going to Wichita to buy a computer. But we're going to be broadcasting live from what used to be Betty's Runway Lounge. It is now called the Crow's Nest, and we're going to be broadcasting the show live. It is going to be a psycho circus. We have got bands. We have an acoustic band coming in. High Five for Fisting is going to do an acoustic set. We are going to be talking to a band. That they're going to be our house band. We won't have commercials this weekend. Anytime we need to take a break. We'll let the band play a song. They are going to be called the Iron Octomoms. Whatever the hell that means. So we're going to be doing that. It should be fun this weekend. I, I, I think we will have a blast. We've got some guests. Jennifer Wynn, who ducked coming on this program when she was running for governor whether she wants to believe it or not she ducked me she is a she is running for wichita mayor so she is going to be involved in our show on sunday hopefully she actually shows up for this i don't know she's had a death in the family so i'm if, if she doesn't that's fine i'm not going to ridicule her over it it's going to be a three-hour show. I don't know why we're doing a three-hour show. Basically, the, the people that booked us for this remote misunderstood that the three-hour show we do during the week is three hours during the week. The two hours we do on the Sunday show is the two hours we do on the Sunday show. At some point, 
And this is what's going to end up happening. At some point, we need to merge all of these things. And I may do that. I may merge the Sunday Radio Show Facebook page with the Facebook page for the Daily Show. And we might just go across the board. Because in the world of the internet, you can't do two separate shows. People... You know, Tom Likas kind of gets away with it because he has a wine and cheese show called The Tasting Room, and then he has The Tom Likas Show. We have The Jiggy Jaguar Show, which is what you're listening to right now. And then we have The Jiggy Jaguar Experience, which is on Sundays, which is the studio show where we have guests and we do all the things that we do. I don't know. Who knows what is going to go on here, but that is that. What are some other things going on? Uh, We're supposed to do that this morning. We didn't do that. We're going to be talking to IQ Al Rizzoli, actually, at the top of next hour. So um, he will be with us. We are going to yell and scream, but we're not going to yell and scream. We're just going to to lay out some points in our final hour. Uh, unfortunately, a final hour. I don't know why we're doing a final hour. Next hour should be our final hour. But... We made a commitment to the Starcom Radio Network to do a one-hour show... At 5 o'clock Central, every single day, Monday through Friday. We made a commitment to do a show. We're honoring that commitment until the end of the year, and then I'm going to see if they will just carry this show. I don't know. 20 plus AM FM stations is is not something to sneeze at, so that's why we decided we would do this. Uh, We're going to take a time out here. When we come back, it will be top of the hour time, or it is top of the hour time. And that means IQ Al Rizzoli will join us. Mr. IQ. Yes, that IQ. I got some interesting stuff to talk to this guy about today. Yay, indeed. So we're going to do all that when we come back here on the world famous Chicken Jack Why You Show. But uh, this segment is sponsored by our good friends. Uh, we have a thought about firing our bosses. Well, you can do just that, and I'm going to tell you how. I recently came across a brand new business that is helping people do just that. A business that is super easy to operate. It can virtually be set to autopilot. How good that would be. Just think of the income. You could you could fire your boss. Wow. Just think of that. Now you could be in charge and not have to listen to the boss ordering you around. I recommend you look at the video that's going to explain everything. Register for free on www.click here.kiwi that's click here.kiwi to secure your spot remember it will cost you nothing to do that you owe it to yourself and your family to just have a look if you decide it is for you a great guy from new zealand will contact you i hope you all know where new zealand is it's in that pure green country way down in the south pacific where they made the you know the lord of the rings this guy will help you with three easy steps to get you set up and start making a great income in just three to five hours a week I guess you've heard of making money while you sleep. Well, this is it. Take a look at the website. There is lots of information. It could be the beginning of something amazing for you. I'll give you that website again. It's www.clickhere.kiwi. Grab a pen. Write it down. www.clickhere.kiwi. I would love to know your story, and who knows, maybe when you have made enough weekly income to fire your boss, I'll invite you into the studio here, and you can tell me all about it. The website, again, is www.clickhere.kiwi, and we'll spell it for you, C-L-I-C-K-H-E-R-E dot K-I-W-I, and tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. 
Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, Keeley Kendall Designs. That's KKD. Creates and champions jewelry that makes you want to get up, get dressed, and go out. Hit the town or hang at the beach. KKD accessories are as in tune with your sophisticated side as they are with your favorite casual, cool, laid-back looks. Keeley Kendall Designs is all about having fun, being who you are, and feeling gorgeous. Cool, funky, and modern. Express yourself in KKT. Check it out today. KeeleyKendall.com. That's K E E L E Y K E N D A L L dot com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. We all love a great deal, especially when we get quality items at a great price. I want to tell you about an eBay store that has some of the best deals I've ever seen, and you got to check it out. MyFloorToShop.com MyFloorToShop.com offers great deals on clothes for men and women, gift items, jewelry, and more. With brands like Chico's, Old Navy, Dockers, Land's Inn, Izon, only to name a few. You'll save 10% on the quality items at MyFloorToShop.com and always free shipping. MyFloridaShop.com just added plus size clothing. New items are added every month. Right now there's a big sale going on at MyFloridaShop.com to make room for new inventory. Visit right now MyFloridaShop.com One of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. Check out rso.lv slash make money! R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. Check it out today. Amazing, amazing website. Check it out today. It's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And we'll spell it for you. R-S-O dot L-V slash M-A-K-E-M-O-N-E-Y. That's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Let's tell you about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, DennisJamesBrown.com. Check out the website. That's D-E-N-N-I-S-J-A-M-E-S-B-R-O-W-N-E.com. Dennis Brown's a college professor who's just posted a romantic Kindle ebook titled A Summer Love Story, which you can find at the website, DennisJamesBrown.com. Or you can go to Amazon and search for it there. As you can see, this is just an amazing book. Everyone who has read this book has given it a five-star rating, which is very, very rare. I guarantee you, and the author guarantees you, if you like romantic novels, you will love A Summer Love Story. The Kindle Free Book Program is set up for next Wednesday, the 24th, Thursday the 25th, and Friday the 26th. This will allow the listeners to download and read the book for free. And uh, you need to check that out today. It's an amazing, amazing book. Dennis Brown is back. A summer love story. Check out DennisJamesBrown.com and tell him you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. What's the most complex arrangement of matter in the universe? Find out on today's Creation Moments Minute up next. What's the most complex arrangement of matter in the universe? Find out on today's Creation Moments Minute. Though it weighs only three pounds, your brain's structure is so complex that it defies all explanation, except to admit that a higher intelligence created it. The average brain has 10 billion neurons and multiple billions of connections. The brain can hold one million times more information than anyone could possibly learn in a lifetime. Through its extended sensory system, your brain allows your finger to feel a vibration of less than eight one-thousandths of an inch and lets you see ten million different colors. The brain is so marvelously complex that even scientists who deny the soul and believe that matter is all that exists have admitted that the brain makes them wonder if there's more to reality. Some are even willing to talk about a spiritual reality. For CreationMomentsMinute.com, I'm Darren Marlar. Jiggy Jaguar Radio Program. Raw and uncut, Jiggy Jag, you know how you do it. You know what I'm saying? Keeping it 
Broadcasting live from Hutchinson, Kansas. Well, I'm sitting here with a linguist. I had a linguist. no idea. <laughs> I, love I didn't that. know you were, a, but I didn't know that you were a wordsmith. <laughs> Call Jiggy right now. 267 22 Jiggy. Daddy Fun. Hey, Jiggy, what's happening, man? It reminds me <laughs> that uh, David Bowie song. Jiggy play guitar. Jeff. It's a great name, man. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Presenting. I'm, I'm Mike Massey, and uh, you know, you can catch me on Jiggy Jag TV and uh, see a few of my trick shots there. Thank you very much. Jiggy Jaguar. I never knew what freedom was until I saw you lose yours. Oh, what a fantastic day. It is the world-famous Cheeky Jaguar radio program. From the KJAG Radio Studios in downtown Hutchinson, Kansas, we're live as live can get. This is the final hour of our program here on the big broadcast. We've got uh, IQ Al Rizzoli, and of course, IQ joins us each and every week talking about the issues of the day. I've got a lot of things I want to talk to him about today because there's been a lot of things happen while we were on vacation, I wasn't really much vacation. I pretty much, you know, worked the entire time I was at the state fair. But, <laughs> to, to the point, um, IQ Al Rizzoli with us today. Now, IQ, um, recently, Bill Maher has come under a little bit of fire for um, talking about Muslims I'm going to play this clip, and then I want to get your response to it. So here it is. Hopefully it will uh, Hopefully it'll play. <laughs> oh, it plays after we have the, uh, after, we do a, after we do a commercial for uh, America's Got Talent, apparently. But uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to play a clip here with um, Bill Maher. He's recently been discussing this Muslim, uh, the Muslim situation and uh, what the Muslims are basically oh, doing. This is from Charlie Rose. Here it is. How have you evolved, which has been the evolution in your own politics? I mean, for example, you, you were very strong in terms of the threat of radical fundamentalist jihadism. Still am. I know. Yes, I think uh, liberals should stop booing me for pointing out that Islam is not like other religions, that is a unique threat. and that yeah, there but, is it, but it's not Islam you're against. It's... All religions are stupid. They are. Yeah. I mean, you're, I, I doubt if you're really religious. It would be very hard for me to believe that you actually believe in these uh, intellectually embarrassing anachronisms from the Bronze Age. Do you really believe in the Bible, which, which, all my the, the, the Bible which supports slavery, which is no, pro-polygamy, no, which not. believes a guy lived no. inside plus, of a whale? I, you know, I mean, no. As you know from this program, I'm a... I debate of science too. Right. Okay. So uh, I heard. No covering all bets. I, I saw Howard Dean on uh, TV the other day, and he said something uh, along the order of, "He said uh, the people in ISIS are." Uh, I said, "I'm about as uh, Islamic as they are." You know, distancing the vast numbers yeah, of right. Islamic people around right. the world from it. That's just not true. It is true. It is not true, Charlie. There is a connecting tissue between. Hey, uh, you mean you know behind every. Behind every Muslim is a future member of some radical... Let me finish. I thought I was doing that. <laughs> uh, there are illiberal beliefs that are held by vast numbers of Muslim people that I don't think... Vast Howard... number of Christians, too. No, have no, that's people. not true. Not true. Vast numbers of Christians do not believe that if you leave the Christian religion, you should be killed for it. Vast numbers of Christians do not treat women as second-class citizens. Vast numbers of Christians no, I agree with that. do I not just believe said. that if you draw a picture of Jesus Christ, you should get killed for it. Um, so, yes, does ISIS do Khmer Rouge-like activities where they just kill people indiscriminately who aren't just like them? Yes. And would most Muslim people in the world do that or condone that? No. no. But most Muslim people in the world do condone violence just for what you, you think that? they do first of all know. they say it they shout it Vast from the majority of Muslims absolutely say that? there's a pew poll of egypt done a few years ago 82 percent i think it was said uh stoning is the appropriate punishment for adultery over 80 percent thought uh, death was the appropriate punishment for leaving the muslim religion I'm sure you know these things. I know. Um, well, I do. So, but so I, to but claim I don't, that this I don't religion believe... is like other religions is just naive and plain wrong. It is not like other religions. Uh, the New York, Times point, New York Times pointed out an uh, op-ed a couple of weeks ago that in Saudi Arabia, um, 
just since August 4th, I think it was, they have beheaded 19 people, most for nonviolent crimes, right. including homosexuality. No, they didn't got the hands off the thief. Right. Okay, so we're upset that uh, ISIS is beheading people, which yeah. we should be upset about. But Saudi Arabia does it, and they're our good friends because they have oil. Right. Okay? But they do it too. This is the center of the religion. I'm but not saying. They're now fighting against ISIS too. They're joining us in the fight, as is the Emirates. As well, is they are both Jordan, fighting ISIS, and, and they are for ISIS. Well, the not the government. I mean, some of the certainly private... Certainly the government. They, it's a... IQ. <laughs> Give me your thoughts to all that. Uh, are people starting to wake up with this whole thing? Not really. Okay. The left-wing people will never wake up until their heads are chopped off, and very slowly, I hope. They would never wake, wake up. Look at Charlie Rose. He is supposed to be a top level uh, person on, on radio and television. Yep, yep. Talking to top level people. And he says, I don't believe the figures you're telling me. Why doesn't he believe? Has he ever read the Quran? The answer is no. Does he know anything about Hadith? The answer is no. Then he's a stupid man. He's a criminally negligent man. Why? Because millions of people are watching. And the jerk like him is telling them, Oh no, I don't believe what Boko Haram is telling me. I don't believe what Al-Qaeda is telling me. I don't believe what Osama bin Laden is telling me. Because they don't know anything about Islam. But Charlie Rose knows more about Islam than they do. Now you tell me. He should be put in an asylum. A mental asylum. You know, the other side was perfectly correct. Yes. Perfectly correct. There are no moderate Muslims. None. Give you an example. There must be listeners to our show now. Yes, indeed. I asked them, go to your, go to your Muslim friend, the one that you believe is a moderate. Ask a simple question. Very, very simple. Not Betrayal is not misleading, it's not a trap. Ask this question to the Muslim. Tell him, according to the Quran, I, what am I called according to the Quran? I'm not a Muslim. What am I called in the Quran? Simple question for God's sake. And you're asking it from your nice neighbor, the peaceful, peace loving Muslim. He's got two choices either taqiyya to lie to you. Or to be truthful. Yeah. And the answer is only one thing. That according to the Quran, 80% of humanity who are not Muslims are infidels, kuffar, unbelievers, kafirun, who are literally equal to the beast. The Quran says they are equal to the beast. I don't say that. <laughs> the Quran says that. Yeah. The Quran says that those who are unbelievers, 80% of humanity, are destined to the hellfires of Allah. I don't say that. Now, I ask a simple question now. Go to your perfectly nice Muslim this is and the second ask them this simple yeah. question. Yeah. Well, see, this th this is the and thing, I, the I, IQ. I, I've been trying to figure out... Um, you know the 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 Bill Maher situation there. I'm I'm starting to, uh, you know, a guy like Charlie Rose is 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 basically you know not not waking up on this. But I I notice these guys like Bill Maher and others that that are. Um, is is it because of the beheadings fairly recently, or or why is it that there's certain people yes, that are starting I to go, hey? Yes. ISIS is God's last warning to humanity. If you believe in God, I'm telling you. If you don't believe in God, ISIS is poetic justice. Yeah. Why? Because ISIS is doing exactly what Muhammad used to do 1400 years ago. ISIS is following the Quran letter by letter. Yes. Not word by word, letter by letter. Beheadings were made by Muhammad in the year 600 and I think 27 AD he and his thugs cut off the heads of men and boys of the Koreza tribes between 600 to 900 
men and boys, in Medina, in front of their women, in front of their children, the whole day and the whole night. They butchered them. And then they raped the women, enslaved the children, and sold them. Wow. Who said so? Hadith say so. You want to check me up? Google it. <laughs> yes. Google it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Google Koraiza, the massacre of the Koraiza tribe. Google it. The Quran says so. Because it describes it in one of the chapters of the Quran. But the Hadith, especially a book by a man called Ibn Ishaq, who 140 years after the death of Muhammad, collected the biography of Muhammad. It is the most important book in Islam. Literally, the foremost book in Islam after the Quran. And when you read this book, it is translated to English. It's called The Life of Muhammad by Alfred Guillaume. Alfred Guillaume is the one who translated it. And not only did he translate it, he had to submit it to the Islamic Council who accepted it as authentic. So it is beyond any doubt that what you read is exactly what the Muslims allowed. And when you read this book, which is very heavy, it's, uh, it's about 800 pages, it destroys Muhammad, discredits Muhammad as a prophet and the alleged divine origin of his Quran. Can you believe that? Well, if you don't believe it, I don't give a damn. It's a fact. <laughs> you know, it is by divine will, Qudra Ilahiya in Arabic, and divine justice, Haq Ilahi, that the very hadith, which are the stories about Muhammad from his companions, that explain to the followers of Muhammad his Quran and his Sunnah. By the way, Sunnah means what Muhammad did, his thoughts and attributes, based on the Islamic records. Yeah. So, the very books which are Muhammad's Quran and Sunnah are the very same Islamic scriptures that utterly discredit Muhammad as a prophet and the alleged divine origin of his Quran. I use the word divine justice. If you're, somebody is an atheist, I don't care. The important thing is, read this book and you'll find out how despicable Muhammad was. Yeah. No negotiations. Can I destroy Muhammad's Quran in less than 60 seconds? Of course I can. Oh, yes, In how indeed. many different ways? At least 25 different ways. Every time in less than 60 seconds. You remember what I've done last time? Yes. I don't know. Well, uh, IQ Al Rizzoli is with us today. He joins us live. We're going to take a, a quick time out here. When we come back, we're going to keep chatting with IQ about some of the issues of the day. I want to get IQ's thoughts on this uh, New York man charged with trying to recruit for ISIS. We'll talk a little bit about that when we come back here on the big program, Coast to Coast and Border to Border. But uh, this segment is sponsored by our good friends. Uh, we have a thought about firing our bosses. Well, you can do just that, and I'm going to tell you how. I recently came across a brand new business that is helping people do just that, a business that is super easy to operate. It can virtually be set to autopilot. How good that would be. Just think of the income. You could, you could fire your boss. Wow. Just think of that. Now you could be in charge and not have to listen to the boss ordering you around. I recommend you look at the video that's going to explain everything. Register for free on www.clickhere.kiwi. That's clickhere.kiwi. To secure your spot, remember it will cost you nothing to do that. You owe it to yourself and your family to just have a look. If you decide it is for you, a great guy from New Zealand will contact you. I hope you all know where New Zealand is. It's in that... 
pure green country way down in the South Pacific where they made the you know the Lord of the Rings. This guy will help you with three easy steps to get you set up and start making a great income in just three to five hours a week. I guess you've heard of making money while you sleep. Well, this is it. Take a look at the website. There is lots of information. It could be the beginning of something amazing for you. I'll give you that website again. It's www.clickhere.kiwi. Grab a pen, write it down, www.clickhere.kiwi. I would love to know your story, and who knows, maybe when you have made enough weekly income to fire your boss, I'll invite you into the studio here, and you can tell me all about it. The website, again, is www.clickhere.kiwi. We'll spell it for you. C-L-I-C-K-H-E-R-E dot K-I-W-I. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, Keeley Kendall Designs. That's KKD. Creates and champions jewelry that makes you want to get up, get dressed, and go out. Hit the town or hang at the beach. KKD accessories are as in tune with your sophisticated side as they are with your favorite casual, cool, laid-back looks. Keeley Kendall Designs is all about having fun, being who you are, and feeling gorgeous. Cool, funky, and modern. Express yourself in KKD. Check it out today. KeeleyKendall.com. That's K E E L E Y K E N D A L L.com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. We all love a great deal, especially when we get quality items at a great price. I want to tell you about an eBay store that has some of the best deals I've ever seen, and you got to check it out. MyFloridaShop.com MyFloridaShop.com offers great deals on clothes for men and women, gift items, jewelry, and more. With brands like Chico's, Old Navy, Dockers, Lands Inn, Izon, only to name a few. You'll save 10% on the quality items at MyFloridaShop.com and always free shipping. MyFloridaShop.com just added plus size clothing. New items are added every month. Right now there's a big sale going on at MyFloridaShop.com to make room for new inventory. Visit right now MyFloridaShop.com One of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. Check out RSO.LV slash make money! R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. Check it out today. Amazing, amazing website. Check it out today. It's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And we'll spell it for you. R-S-O dot L-V slash M-A-K-E-M-O-N-E-Y. That's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And tell them you heard about it here A Transmedia Worldwide. This is your radio philosopher, Eric Patton, bringing you your thought of the day. Entitlement generation or entitlement society? Justin Bieber has been in the news recently because of his run-ins with the law. And many are quick to point out that this is an entitlement generation. But let's take a look deeper. Look and see where you work and what you do and who you associate with. Are people more likely to take responsibility or are they more likely to pass it along to others? So before we label this entitlement generation, let's first examine and see if we have an entitlement society. For more thoughts, you can visit my website, ericpapp.com. Thanks, and remember, this is your life. Diggy Jaguar, 24-7. Thanks for listening. Welcome back to the program, Coast to Coast to Border to Border. IQ Al Rizzoli is with us today. He joins us. He will be off next week, but he'll be back the following week. IQ, the um, there has been <laughs> there's been a story that recently came out as of uh, I believe it was yesterday. A New York man has been charged with attempting to recruit new members into the terrorist group ISIS. So far, the U.S. government believes that over 100 Americans are fighting for ISIS and. Um, this gentleman was arrested and charged with trying to recruit more. According to federal authorities, uh, he attempted to persuade two other people to join ISIS, and on top of that, he was planning to kill U.S. soldiers who had served in Iraq. He'd actually been speaking with, it turns out, FBI informants, and these informants relayed that uh, this gentleman was actively encouraging them to go to Syria. He even covered some of the expenses for passports. One of the informants 
says he once told him, you want to stop the killing machine that is happening there, you understand, and the only way to deter them by any means. And uh, Mufid El- Elfjeef, I believe is, is, is how you pronounce the gentleman's name, uh, what the hell is going on? When, when did this become... I, I don't understand. I, I guess he must have been a real, uh, an actual guy recruiting for ISIS. It wasn't like some of these, some of these other stories we've talked about, where where like women have just wanted to join ISIS or people have just wanted to to join the the, the organization. Um, he apparently must must have been a guy who was already here in the U.S. that was actively recruiting. Um, how 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 do we come across these people? Are they bas- basically like a sleeper cell, or what is this IQ? I know it sounds ridiculous, but I've told you a million times. Every single Muslim in the United States of America is an enemy of America. Yeah. Don't take my word for it. Look at what the Quran says. Al-Ma'idah 5.51. All ye who believe Muslims, take not the uh, Jews, Yahud, and the Christians are Sarah for your friends and protectors. They're bad friends and protectors to each other. And he amongst you that turns to them for friendship is of them. This is the Quran. What is it saying? It's telling the Muslims that you are, if you are a friend of Christian or a Jew or any non-Muslim, you're a traitor to Islam. That's what it says. And if you are a traitor to Islam, you are subject to death and destruction. I'm not saying it. The Quran is saying it. So if somebody is a believer in Islam, if somebody is a believer in Muhammad, and if somebody is a believer in Allah, the God of Islam, what do you expect from them? To love you? The answer is no, they can't. To love your constitution? The answer is no. The constitution of America is man-made. They only obey Sharia, which is Allah constitution. And Sharia is based on two things, Quran and Sunnah. That's it. Now, people are saying, oh, no, no, there are minorities. There are no minorities. There are no moderates in Islam. The one you call moderate today is the one who's not killing you this moment. But this moderate will change in an instant to be a mass murderer, like the Boston uh, boys. Yes. Good looking boys. Yep. They came to the United States to have a, the American dream. But they were not there for the American dream. They were to subvert. And they killed the Americans. And they, was, they were going to get away with it had it not been for the CCTV cameras. Yeah. And found them. They would have got away with it. I know it sounds outrageous, but you show me a single Muslim who can come on this radio show and debate me. Ladies and gentlemen, please do us a favor, both to James and myself. Call in. If you disagree with me, call me. Say why you disagree with me. If you agree with me, also call and say why you agree with me. (laughs) But call in. We need feedback. We need to know that we are dealing with people who are listening who care. Well, I'm not going I, to hurt you. I'm not going to kill you. I'm not a Muslim. Well, IQ. Uh, but call in. So uh, another another issue that I uh, I want to get your thoughts on here is um, there's uh, there's there's a uh, tell uh, they're an internet television show. They're called the Young Turks. They have recently uh, Jenk Uger, who's the host of this show, has recently come up with a um, how we should how how America should deal with the ISIS terrorists. And I'm going to play a little bit of this, and we're going to. I'm going to let you to res- respond to, uh, to to some of the different comment series, having a discussion about how they about how they should deal with ISIS. Uh, this is based off the uh, U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel um, has warned uh, warned last week the terrorist group who beheaded American journalist James Foley is tremendously well funded be- beyond anything we have seen. Leader, Here is it the is correct path. It might be. Now they killed Foley, he's an American citizen, you might have some legal justification for it. Before we would have had no legal justification for it. Not that the Obama And if I was like if I was pre- I know Obama doesn't care at all. <laughs> yeah. None of the you but if I was president, I might have pushed that button anyway and then resigned. Said I, I killed him, I shouldn't have killed him. It was an extra judicial killing. ISIS never attacked us, mm. but I had to do it and uh, and I'll see you guys later. Okay. Now it doesn't matter they killed Foley, it's a good enough excuse to go get him, right? 
because al Baghdadi, their leader, is really, really smart. Okay, now that sucks for us. We haven't had a, a, an adversary this uh, capable in a long, long time, right? So, but they will not be able to carry on without him in the ways that they are. Okay. Now the problem is we have, like what happened to the CIA? We used to have spies. We used to, like remember all those movies and we'd go into the KGB in Russia and we'd do this and then we'd do a poison pen and the guy's dead and we win and yeah, where the hell are they? Right? This is when we need the CIA. Get the fucking side ISIS. It's chaos there anyway. We don't have a single you know Muslim American guy who can be brave enough to get in there. I've always been shocked that we couldn't get inside Al Qaeda enough to kill Zawahiri and bin Laden. Eventually we killed bin Laden, but from the outside, right? Yeah. But you gotta get somebody inside, you gotta find Baghdadi. Okay. Okay, IQ, give me give me your thoughts on that. Is there a possibility that we could ever get anybody inside of ISIS or ISIL or whatever the heck they're called this week? What for? You don't need to get anybody inside. He asked the question where the CIA? That's a stupid question. It was the CIA who created ISIS. Where do you think ISIS came from? See, that, that it came from after the downfall of Gaddafi in Libya. Who brought Gaddafi down? The CIA, Obama, Britain and France. Why did they have to kill him? He was not threat to America. He was the one who held the whole of Libya and North Africa together. Why did they kill him? Ask the question. The CIA did it. Obama sanctioned it. Obama, the one who is telling you all of a sudden you have ISIS, it's not true. It was because of Obama that we have ISIS. It is because of Obama that we have the al-Nusra. It is because of Obama that Mubarak, Hosni Mubarak of Egypt was removed. It is because of Obama that Hamas is powerful. It is of, because of Obama the, the Muslim Brotherhood is powerful. Obama. Am I picking on him because he's black? I don't give a damn he's black. He's not black, he's half white anyway. He could yes. be polka dot for all I care. <laughs> You're right. But the son of a gun <laughs> is a traitor to America. I said he was going to be a traitor to America before he was elected. That's over six years ago. Nobody listened. Why, why do we... Uh... White. You, Americans, elected him twice. Unbelievable. IQ, what? No, you, you, the CIA you, is implicated. See, you bring Why up you, you you bring up a good point there, IQ. Benghazi. You bring Sorry, it, I didn't hear you. You bring up an excellent point. This and this is this is what I wanted to get into in our in our next segment, but we'll skip this break and we'll do this now. Um, why do we keep funding all of these all of these people, and we keep creating problems for ourselves? If you look back at uh, when in in the eighties we had the the Iran situation where they had had taken hostages, and then we had the situation where the the Russians were fighting against people, and so we funded uh, a, a group of rebels that ended up becoming Bin Laden and, and uh, Al Qaeda, and and now we have this situation where it's it's Al Qaeda, but they've changed their name, and we have this ISIS ISIL thing, and it's because we funded them to go up against uh, Gaddafi, and now we're fighting against them. And then I, I heard earlier this week that there's a rumor they're going to try to fund uh, the Syrian rebels now. And I'm like, why do we keep funding all of these people? This is just uh, insane to me. Correct. Because either your leadership is complicit for whatever reason, or completely and utterly out of touch with reality. Look, in 1973, there was the oil crisis. OPEC shut off the oil for Europe. Yep. Europe went on a three-day work. Yep. But you haven't learned anything. You, I mean the West. Oh, yeah. You haven't learned anything. You're dummies. You are still hostages to Islam. This is why not a single leader in Europe or the United States of America could say, guys, it is Islam, stupid, it is Islam, stupid, it is the Quran. Why? Because they will stop the oil again. Can you imagine any president of the United States of America or any leader in Europe coming up and says, hey, Saudi Arabia, you are Muslim, you are complicit, 
you are a terrorist organization or a terrorist nation, what will happen to them? Oil will be stopped. They're not stupid. Yep. Our leaders are not stupid. But they are complicit because they have allowed Europe and America to be hostage to Arab oil money and Islamic oil money. That's the problem. To deal with Islam, to deal with ISIS, ISIS is nothing. It is absolutely nothing. Look at them. Look how they're fighting, for goodness sake. One division of the United States of America should be able to obliterate them, especially with air power. Am I exaggerating? The answer is no. I'm not exaggerating. No. ISIS, you're going to go to war now with ISIS. I don't need to go to war with ISIS. I can destroy ISIS on the battlefield of knowledge. How? By proving that Allah is not God. Can I do that? Yes. In 25 different ways, in less than 60 seconds each way. Since Allah is not God, then, well, not only not God, he's not the same as the God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham. Then Islam is not a Brahmic religion. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a cult belief system, the cult of Muhammad. Hence calling Islam peaceful and or a religion are two of the most egregious lies that have ever been insinuated into the human consciousness. I don't need to go to war to destroy Islam. We need to do it on the internet. We, can, we do it on television. We do it on radio. But nobody is willing to do that. Nobody is willing to do that. And yet we can destroy Islam without war. Why? By proving that Allah is not God, based entirely on the Arab scripture, on their Quran and the Hadith, beyond the shadow or even a reasonable doubt, what do you think they will do? Come on. Bring any imam, the best imam, the best scholar in Islam to debate me. Ten minutes. He's gone. Ten minutes. He's gone. That's it. Finished. Do you think anybody will come against me? The answer is no. No. <laughs> Am I bragging? The answer is no. All, it doesn't have to be me, by the way. It could be you. It could be anybody. Just look at my chapters. Just read my 248th chapter. It says, The Destruction of Islam. I have 22 different ways. Each one of them is less than 60 seconds. Why? Because I'm basing it on their own books and their own scripture. They say that Allah revealed the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, not the Hebrew Bible, the five books of Gen uh, the five books of the Torah, which are the fifth five books of the Bible, Genesis to Deuteronomy. It tells you he revealed the five books of Moses to Moses. In, in verse after verse in the Quran, in Arabic, in English, in 80 languages. He also says, the Quran, that it revealed the Gospels to Jesus. It says, the Injil. Well, come on, guys. Anybody with two brain cells of logic who knows about Christianity should know that nobody revealed the Gospels to Jesus. Jesus did not leave a single document. And the Gospels were written 50 to 100 years after Jesus was dead. Question. How is it possible that if Allah is the same as the God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham, not to know this fact? Less than 60 seconds. James? It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But it yes. is ridiculous. If Allah is God, he should have known this is not the case. And then another verse tells you, Jesus did not die on the cross. A lookalike died on the cross. Really? Based on what? Allah says so in the Quran. But nobody asked this question for 1400 years, James. Nobody, not a single person ever asked these simple questions. And yet they are devastating. So bring me an imam to explain it to me. Or to explain it to you. Ask the imam. Imam, Allah said he revealed the Gospels to Jesus. But all four Gospels that he revealed to Jesus say that Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected the third day. Then how is it possible in another verse, Allah says, no, that didn't happen. 
Why is he contradicting himself if he's God? James is simple. Debated on television. When we prove that Allah is not God, you know what will happen? Wow. That means every Muslim who ever died fighting for Sabilullah, Qital fi Sabilullah, never went to Muhammad's whorehouse version of paradise with the 72 versions. All suicide bombers end up dead, full stop. No virgins. I don't know if you, you really get the magnitude of what I'm telling you, honestly, James. The enormity of what I'm telling you. It shows beyond a reasonable doubt that what they have is crap. <laughs> and that no yes. God ever revealed anything to Muhammad. Whether it was Allah or the angel Gabriel, nothing. So everything is false. Everything is a lie. So all of them are dying for nothing. Literally for nothing. I, I finished the war. It's finished. It's over. Sounds arrogant, doesn't it? But it isn't. I, all I want people who are listening is think about it. Just think about it. The instant we prove that Allah is not God, and most certainly not the same as the God of Jesus, Moses, and Abraham, Islam is finished. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they do. Islam is finished. It becomes a laughing stock of 80% of humanity who are not Muslim. Which Muslim will stand up and say, ah, no, no, Allah is God. We can prove it in less than 60 seconds. It's impossible. I hope you get my me- my message. Well, I, I am uh, I am going to see, and I don't know this. I don't know if they'll email me back. I'm sure they probably won't. But uh, I've sent an email to an Islamic center out of Topeka, Kansas. It was the first thing I could find about having them on to talk about and debate the 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 Quran and. Uh, and the Muslim faith, and we're going to see if they get back with me. If they do, we're going to try to set this up, because <laughs> I just think that would be entertaining, because you have the facts, yes. and they you don't. Answer, you, you ask them the question, I will, I will listen, and then I will be the guest also. Yes, we're we're gonna we're gonna try to get this set up because if I can make this happen, we're gonna. I don't think it will happen. I don't think it will either. <laughs> but if uh, if 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 we can uh, if we can make this happen, it would be uh, very entertaining. A um, yes, a miracle. Uh, yes, indeed. Um, continuing here with uh, with with what we were uh, we were talking about. Here's more audio. I want to get your thoughts on this. Hold on. Now I don't think they're capable of doing that. So then you got to, you know, pursue a second strategy. I would do both strategies. I would do a massive humanitarian effort in the region. Mm -hmm. Now, I know the neocons of the world and the mainstream media are going to think, oh, how naive. This liberal is going to hand out roses. (laughs) He's such an idiot. No, I just told you, for God's sake, kill their leader. Okay, otherwise we're screwed and this is going to grow and grow. No, they are winning in bizarre way, hearts and minds or ripping their hearts and minds out, right? We've got to go in there and be overwhelmingly good to the point where people go, wait a minute now, geez, why are we going with the beheading guys, right? When these guys, every time my aunt got hurt, US guys showed up, doctors showed up, right? Every time my kid, kid needed a book, US guys showed up and gave him a book, right? Every time I needed something, the US was here for me. So like the Yazidi on top of that mountain with ISIS. You see, we already know it works. When we, when a US uh, airplane started flying over Mount Sinjar, for the first time in anybody's memory, somebody in the Middle East looked up at an American airplane and said, thank God the Americans are here, right? And so if we could get the Middle East, and it's a long project, but if we can get the Middle East to say, thank God the Americans are here, which by the way, they used to say during the Marshall Plan. That's why we, how we got to have this great brand of America and freedom and hope and opportunity, because we actually delivered that after World War II. We built up our enemies, Germany and Japan. They're our top allies now. We built up Turkey, we built up Greece, we did the Marshall Plan, and it worked. It was the most liberal thing in the world. It was the most practical thing in the world. It turned the whole world in favor of us instead of against us. So we got to endanger our lives. We got to spend a lot of money. We got to do whatever we got to do to make sure 
that when, when ISIS comes, people go, oh, God damn it, I hope the Americans help, right? And not help by bombing us from the sky indiscriminately, yeah. but actually help. Yeah, I think that that could totally work so long as we also put massive pressure on the Iraqi government to distribute political power more equi equitably. Oh, like yeah. so, like the the gifts and everything that that definitely could help spur economic growth and things like that. But if they still see the Iraqi government as inherently their enemies as opposed to potentially their saviors, I don't think long term it. I don't think it could do enough. And, and be practical. So not just uh, have the Iraqi government uh, work with uh, all the different Sunni Shiites and Kurds and all the different sects, but it honestly, realistically, probably break up the country. It's yeah. already broken up. Okay. Okay, IQ, jump in there, baby. Who are those idiots? <laughs> no, no, honestly, I mean, who are the idiots who are talking? I've never heard of them. Who are they? They, they are an internet television news program called the Young Turks. <laughs> that says it all. Oh, the Young Turks are like that. So they're Islamists. The idiot who was talking about the Marshall Plan, he didn't tell you that the Marshall Plan was not towards Muslims. The Marshall Plan was for Europe. The Marshall Plan was for Japan. And the Japanese are not Muslims. And the Europeans are not Muslims. So the Marshall Plan will never work in Islam. He is talking garbage. Those people should have their brains examined to see if they have any gray matters between the ears. I, on, I know, I know I sound arrogant. But he is talking pure, pure nonsense. Islam, they have more money than we, God, they have more money than God. Question, why do the Muslims come to Europe? Why don't the refugees go to another Muslim country? Why do they come to Europe? Why do they come to America? Why do they go to Australia and New Zealand? Why don't they go to their Muslim brothers and sisters? Simple question. I always ask simple questions. Why? Because they are the most difficult to answer. Yeah. So why do the Muslims come to the land of the kuffar, the infidels? Because they know we're a soft target. We're stupid. We give them shelter. We give them food. We give them education. We give them money. We give them everything so that they can subvert us. And who's the stupid one? We are. Fucking them with money. Shower them with love. Shower them with money. He's an idiot. Pure pure idiot and he's talking about Marshall Plan the Marshall Plan was with Europeans civilized people even the Japanese civilized people Arabs with civilization there was never an Arab civilization ever in history there was never an Islamic civilization ever in history ever anybody who listening and disagrees with me at least have the backbone to come against me, come and debate me. No, I don't know who the Young Turks are, but I swear to you, all three of them talking together, all their gray matter will not fit the brain of a cockroach. Back to you, sir. <laughs> no, I just, I, 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 that's why I played the clip. I wanted to get your thoughts on some of the ideas that, that, yeah, that, I mean, that people are, are putting people are out there. These people are supposed to be so. intelligent. These people are supposed to be on television. I wish I was on television with them. Give me 45 minutes on television. I Islam will never recover. I, I, would, uh, I, would <laughs> I would love to see that. That, I think, would be fantastic. If, uh, if, if, if you could be on television for 45 minutes talking about this, because, yeah, you are correct. I, I don't think Islam would, uh, would, would, would recover too well from all this. No, it will never recover, I promise you. We're going to do I this. Because I'm saying so. It will never recover. We're going to take one, one final... I'm going to reveal the fact the way they are. Yes. <laughs> all I'm going to do is this. Okay, you disagree with me, bring an imam. Bring 12 imams, if you want, 12 scholars of Islam to debate me. Yeah. I have no problem. Bring 30 of them. Bring 50 of them. Makes no difference. We're going to do this. We're going to take you a know, final time out here. We've got we to do a, a commercial break. When we come back, we're going to wrap it up with IQ. 
And uh, we've got more coming up here on the World Famous Jiggy Jaguar Show. Coast to coast to border to border. If you want to get a hold of us, you can do so on Twitter at Jiggy Jaguar. You can also find IQ Al Rizzoli. Uh, he's Googleable. Check him out online. We've got more when we come back. But uh, this segment is sponsored by our good friends. Uh, We have a thought about firing our bosses. Well, you can do just that, and I'm going to tell you how. I recently came across a brand new business that is helping people do just that, a business that is super easy to operate. It can virtually be set to autopilot. How good that would be. Just think of the income. You You could fire your boss. Wow. Just think of that. Now you could be in charge and not have to listen to the boss ordering you around. I recommend you look at the video that's going to explain everything. Register for free on www.clickhere.kiwi. That's clickhere.kiwi. To secure your spot, remember it will cost you nothing to do that. You owe it to yourself and your family to just have a look. If you decide it is for you, a great guy from New Zealand will contact you. I hope you all know where New Zealand is. It's in that pure green country way down in the South Pacific where they made the, you know, the Lord of the Rings. This guy will help you with three easy steps to get you set up and start making a great income in just three to five hours a week. I guess you've heard of making money while you sleep. Well, this is it. Take a look at the website. There is lots of information. It could be the beginning of something amazing for you. I'll give you that website again. It's www.clickhere.kiwi. Grab a pen, write it down, www.clickhere.kiwi. I would love to know your story, and who knows, maybe when you have made enough weekly income to fire your boss, I'll invite you into the studio here, and you can tell me all about it. The website, again, is www.clickhere.kiwi, and we'll spell it for you, C-L-I-C-K-H-E-R-E dot K-I-W-I, and tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Let's talk about one of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide, Keeley Kendall Designs. That's KKD creates and champions jewelry that makes you want to get up, get dressed, and go out. Hit the town or hang at the beach. KKD accessories are as in tune with your sophisticated side as they are with your favorite casual, cool, laid-back looks. Keely Kendall Designs is all about having fun, being who you are, and feeling gorgeous, cool, funky, and modern. Express yourself in KKD. Check it out today. KeelyKendall.com. That's K E E L E Y K E N D A L L dot com. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. We all love a great deal, especially when we get quality items at a great price. I want to tell you about an eBay store that has some of the best deals I've ever seen, and you got to check it out. MyFloorToShop.com MyFloorToShop.com offers great deals on clothes for men and women, gift items, jewelry, and more. With brands like Chico's, Old Navy, Dockers, Lands, Inn, Izon, only to name a few. You'll save 10% on the quality items at MyFloorToShop.com and always free shipping. MyFloridaShop.com just added plus size clothing. New items are added every month. Right now there's a big sale going on at MyFloridaShop.com to make room for new inventory. Visit right now MyFloridaShop.com One of our great marketing partners at Transmedia Worldwide. Check out rso.lv slash make money! R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. Check it out today. Amazing, amazing website. Check it out today. It's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And we'll spell it for you. R-S-O dot L-V slash M-A-K-E-M-O-N-E-Y. That's R-S-O dot L-V slash make money. And tell them you heard about it here on Transmedia Worldwide. Major League Baseball claims technology is key to enhancing the ballpark experience. There are unique initiatives to develop and modernize ballparks. At the very least, technology will provide an enhanced interactive experience. 
At the ballpark, smartphone apps will be available to fan at each venue. They can be customizable depending upon the venue and the fan needs. Years ago, they thought games on the radio would affect attendance. In the 70s, they thought cable may contribute to a decline in numbers. Today, Major League Baseball is trying to embrace new technologies to enhance the fan experience. Ballparks are throwing some serious money at it, so they must be concerned. However, nothing is better than watching a game at the ballpark. I don't care about smartphone apps or ordering a hot dog from my phone. Ideally, I'd like to watch the game while listening to the play-by-play commentary. Baseball is fine, just the way it is. I'm Dave Ferguson of BeyondTheCheers.com, and this has been a Beyond the Cheers moment. Talk with Jiggy right now at 267-22-JIGGY or email JiggyJaguar at JiggyJaguar.com. IQ Al Rizzoli is our weekly contributor. He joins us each and every Wednesday. He will be off next Wednesday, but he'll be back the following week with us. And um, IQ, there's a there's a lot of stories going on. Um, we were talking a little bit about ISIS and ISIL and some of the different things going on over there on the uh, on, on on this this Muslim front. Um, I I just I, I I love the fact that last segment. I love the fact that um, you broke down the Marshall Plan and and you explained all that. Um, for those of for, for the folks that have tuned in late or uh, or or want to get a little bit more of a uh, perspective on that, um, break it down for me one more time here. Why why would the Marshall Plan not work over there in? Uh, the Middle East with, with, with Islam. The Marshall Plan worked in Europe because European states were complete states. They had at least the beginnings of democracy to start with anyway. They were nation, national states. They were known what they are. You know what Germany is. You know where Italy is. And they are Christian. Or they were mostly Christian countries. Japan submitted to American dominance because the emperor allowed it. He had no choice, of course. Korea, South Korea, also received like a Marshall Plan. And each of these countries exceeded every expectation in the end. They really produced incredible results. The Arab and Muslim world, you can pour down trillions of dollars and won't get you anywhere. Why? Because they're Muslim. They do not abide by Western standards. They do not believe in Western rules and regulations. They follow Allah Sharia. And the minute somebody follows Allah Sharia, he reverts to the 7th century of Arabia under Muhammad. Nothing grows under Sharia. Not even a blade of grass. That is why 57 Muslim majority states 20% of humanity, 1,500 million people are the least productive, least inventive, least creative in human history. That's it. Why? They have billions. They have got hundreds of billions of dollars worth of assets in oil, in gas. And what have they done with it? Israel of 8 million outproduces the whole entirety of the Islamic world 100 times. I'm not talking about productivity in gross national product. No. Contribution to humanity. In biochemicals, in biology, in sciences, especially on the internet, in Google. You know, all all the IT comes from Israel. Nothing comes from the Muslim world. I will. 57 Muslim majority states don't have a single university which is accepted as university. Israel has four accredited top-level universities. The Technion, Weizmann Institute, and Haifa University, they are there. They are accredited by the West, by America, by France, by Germany. But not a single university in the whole of the Muslim world. So how is this idiot saying, shower them with money? Which money? America doesn't have money. If you had money, you should take care of yourself first. You need it for Americans. You don't need it for Muslims. Why aren't the Muslim other countries helping their Muslim brothers and sisters? 
Why isn't Saudi Arabia doing it? Qatar doing it? Why isn't Kuwait doing it? This idiot talking about America, you're not a money bag. If I were an American, I wouldn't give a penny to Islam. Not one dime. Not because I'm uncharitable. But they have their own people. How come?